open today's college football Saturday triple header in Lawrence Kansas as the Jayhawks host the number 10 Oklahoma State Cowboys presented in high definition by Phillips televisions. The red hot Oklahoma State Cowboys are sitting on top of the Big 12 South thanks to an awesome scoring attack. Brandon Wheaton leads the nation in passing yards. The number one rusher in the Big 12 with 16 touchdowns is Kendall Hunter. And the nation's leader in receiving yards is Cowboy Justin Blackman. Standing in their way is a fired up Kansas defense. I'm feeling invincible tonight. I'm allowed to take a look into my eyes. Tenth ranked Oklahoma State taking a shot at the Big 12 title. Kansas going for the upset. Big 12 football starts now. <laughs> These fans will see one of the top offenses in college football. Welcome to Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Phillips Televisions. It's number 10 Oklahoma State and the Kansas Jayhawks. As we take a look at the standings Oklahoma State comes to Lawrence in first place in the Big 12 South. The Cowboys lead by one game over Oklahoma and Texas A&M. Hi everybody I'm Steve Fiziak. this is Dave Lapham and Oklahoma State is two weeks from history they've never won the Big 12 South they've already had a marvelous season today but can they finish the job and you know what Steve at this point in the season all you want to do is be in control of your own destiny Oklahoma State is they beat Kansas and they beat Oklahoma and Bedlam they win the Big 12 South maybe the Big 12 and then who knows everything's right in front of them. We do know they have one of the most exciting offenses in country led by three of the top playmakers. They're prolific. I mean they can do everything well. Kendall Hunter can run it. He's looking for his second Big 12 rushing title in the last three years. Brandon Wheaton can throw it with accuracy and velocity can make every throw and Justin Blackman can catch it. And this kid is really special. He attacks the football at its apex. Every contested catch is his. He goes vertical every single game against all Americans. It doesn't matter. This guy's got unbelievable timing and body control. Boxes people out. He's like getting rebounds out there. He's a great basketball player in high school. Can also run it. Little fake play action pass. Reverse. Here comes Blackman. No matter what, he's the best player on the field. He's bigger, faster, stronger than everybody. Great cardiovascular in the fourth quarter. He's as strong as he is in the first quarter. Kansas is rebuilding. They have only three wins. First year coach Turner Gill. First year running back James Sims. But when Kansas has been good, Sims has been really good. Absolutely. Steve, he is the straw that stirs the drink. They're going to have to run the football to keep Oklahoma State's offense on the sideline. These three 100 yard rushing games, common denominator, the three Kansas wins. They've also been in Lawrence, a much tougher opponent at home than they've been on the road, and the Oklahoma State Cowboys have to respect it. When we return, Darren Horton will be in our College Football Saturday studio. You're watching Big 12 College Football Saturday, presented by Phillips Televisions. Welcome back to Lawrence Kansas for the Big 12 conference game between Oklahoma State and Kansas University. Here come the Jayhawks. Now the number 10 team in the nation in Oklahoma State. We told you the Jayhawks are rebuilding with new coach Turner Gill the former Nebraska quarterback who led the Huskers to three straight Orange Bowls is about discipline and attention to detail as a head coach and you can see what he did a Heisman Trophy finalist three consecutive Orange Bowl appearances the Kansas coach is with our Jim Knox. Coach what a challenge today you're going up against the top ranked de offense in the nation now how do you slow them down they're also averaging 45 points a game. Well offensively we got to control the ball we got to put points on the board and then we got to create takeaways hope we can get them punt at least five to six times then that give us a chance with more uh, possessions. Uh, thanks for the time. Coach. All right. Thank you. And there's the head coach of Oklahoma State Mike Gundy he comes here in an absolutely beautiful day 
late November in the Midwest with temperatures in the 50s winds out of the Northwest 10 to 15 KU won the coin toss they have elected to receive and it's Quinn Sharp kicking off to DJ Bashirs and he hammers it out of the end zone so Kansas will have the football at their own 20 yard line. Let's take a look at the Phillips television starting lineup for Kansas. And the Jayhawks have that good strong offensive line led by Brad Thorson who's playing every single position on that line. The running game is led by Quigley but watch out for James Sims when he gets the call. Jonathan Wilson has caught 33 passes this year. Angus Quigley a senior this is senior day for Kansas. Angus one of 20 seniors getting the call and playing their final game and they're going to go deep. And out there is Omiji with the catch. Chris Omiji, the redshirt freshman from Arlington, Texas, with a first down grab, and Kansas starts well. I'll tell you, Meekum threw a perfect ball over the outside shoulder. Broderick Brown in coverage, throws him to the sideline. Tremendous catch, gets the feet down in bounds. Unbelievable start for Kansas, attacking Oklahoma State over the top. A gain of 36 yards on their very first play. The quarterback is Quinn Meekham and he hands off to DJ Bashirs a short gain off the right side and Quinn Meekham gets the start. He's the junior from Provo Utah and Dave this is a guy they were trying to redshirt. Right and they were in, in the, he was about 10 pounds light got in the weight room put on a good 10 pounds because of injury he was needed and he stepped up and responded hadn't gotten many reps in practice very intelligent doesn't need a whole lot. The vertical passing game was questionable for him, but boy, Chuck Long came right out first play of the game, stretching. Now they run the Wildcat off the right side, and a good game for the Jayhawks, very close to a first down at the 34-yard line. Let's check out the Cowboys' defense, brought to you by Phillips Televisions. They'll need a big game from Jamie Blatnick, who leads the team in sacks with four, and they've got great linebackers. Ori Lemon is an All-American candidate. Four terrific defensive backs. McGee leads the Big 12 in interceptions with five. The Jayhawks now out of the I formation. Stephen Foster is the fullback. Right behind him, Angus Quigley. It is third in inches. They give it to Quigley, and Quigley gets the first down. How about our Chrysler Keys? Well, the first thing they want to do is, is take the football away and not give it away. They'd like to be plus three today. If they can take two, get two takeaways, they're in. If they get four, they can really win. They want to score touchdowns, not field goals. Their first drive, they want to put this in the end zone because Oklahoma State pressures you to score touchdowns. And they want to limit yards after catch and contact. Oklahoma State can turn a seven-yard play into a seven -yard play. They run the reverse, and Jonathan Wilson looking to go deep. Oh, Michi's out there. Oh. Incomplete in the end zone, but a flag is down. Man, they're going right for the jugular. I'll tell you, Oklahoma State did not set the alarm clock early enough defensively. It's the old reverse pass. We used to call this the triple pass. And right away, Chuck Long goes to his gadget gimmick play. Pass interference, number 12 of the defense. Penalties 15 yards from the original spot, first down. This, it's been a great drive, first play for over 30 yards, and then they convert on a third and short. They run the reverse pass. Johnny Thomas with the uh, pass interference in the end zone. His arrival is premature to the arrival of the football. Outstanding effort by Omiji. It's a pretty darn good throw by Wilson. Now we get our first look at the true freshman James Sims today and Sims will get the call to carry a short gain inside the 15 yard line. Let's go back and see the tail end of that interference. Yeah you, you can't you can't arrive before the football and Johnny Thomas watch him make contact right there. Here's the football. It's well the contacts well before the arrival of the football. Omichi had a great week of practice and seeing more and more playing time. A big receiver who goes 6'4, 194. He's now at the bottom of your screen. And a blitz is on. They'll run up the middle to Sims. A short gain. It will be third down and five. And this is where they do not want to settle for field goal. One of the keys you're in the red zone, finalized with touchdown. Do not settle for three points. If it's, if it's fourth and short, I wouldn't be surprised to see. And them go for it. You know, I mean, what do you have to lose? You gotta pick something up here on third down. If you don't convert a first down, you have to get close enough on fourth down to make it interesting. 
Turner Gilt told us that. He said field goals will not win this game. It's got to be touchdowns. And now he's got Meekham scrambling right. Quinn throws. Touchdown, Kansas! Tim Beery, the tight end, they love this kid. He had a rough start against North Dakota State, but now it is against Oklahoma State, and Beery comes up big. And I'll tell you, the key to that was Meekum extending and creating the play. He bought himself time and space. Vision unimpeded. He got hit by Cooper Bastin, but he found his big tight end, Beery, in the middle of the end zone. And Kansas off to a great start. Brandstetter with the point after touchdown. 7 0 Kansas. This is a football team that only had 87 yards the entire game against Nebraska last week. They go 80 yards on the first possession. 10 plays. It's the first opening drive touchdown of the year, and Tim Beery with his fourth score of the season. And it's uh, just the Kansas scored first for just the fourth time this season in their football games, getting off to the good, quick start. And uh, Oklahoma State, they're, uh, they got their, their alert out there for a potential onside kick. They feel like Turner Gill is going to pull out all the stops today. These guys up front, make sure it goes over your head before you retreat to get from your block. Jacob Brandstetter to kick off to Gilbert and Thomas. It will be Gilbert from the 12 yards line and Justin finally down past the 30. Let's take a look at the Phillips television starting lineup for Oklahoma State. They have a huge offensive line averaging 6'4", 310 pounds. Adcock having a great year, a junior from Claremore, Oklahoma. Backs and receivers. Hunter's just a 44 yards shy of 1400 so he's having a great year as well and Bo Bowling has 21 catches his last three games the quarterback Brandon Whedon he's the junior from Edmond Oklahoma rewriting the record book at Oklahoma State at the quarterback position single game season unbelievable from the 31 we have flags immediately and Kansas off to a good Delay start game. Off time five-yard penalty remains first down boy Oklahoma State looking lethargic in this football game we talked about earlier in the show that they had some travel issues Boone Pickens got him a, a charter flight that the, the plane wouldn't fly it took four hours to get a workable plane in and really messed up their travel got here at 10 15 last night and look at that hit by the Kansas Jayhawks they have come to play a tremendous play by Isaiah Barfield the junior from Haven Kansas here's a look at the defensive line for KU and Johnson and Dorsey need big moments inside you've got Springer Johnson the linebackers they'll go with that nickel defensive back so five DBs here's Blackman Getting the first down, Justin down the uh -oh. sideline. This guy is an incredible big play artist. He is amazing. He really is. And the key there, Steve, unbelievable block by Joseph Randall, the running back in space. A lot of times when a play, a shallow cross turns into a big play, it's because he got a block down the football field. Blackman, big, fast, strong. Here he comes on the shallow cross. Watch number one in the white jersey. Uh, we didn't see the block, but he sprung him to the perimeter for big yards. 43 yards. Now Kendall Hunter. And a huge gain inside the 20-yard line where Justin Springer, number 45, the middle linebacker, makes the tackle. A champion responds. Oklahoma State responds to an 80-yard drive by Kansas offensively. They step right up with a big play of their own. Justin Blackman, the last three games he's played in, he has had 100 yards receiving at halftime in two of those games against Nebraska and Texas. Good pass defenses. Play action. Whedon. Left side ball broken up at the 12-yard line. It was Greg Brown who has started the last three. How about the Chrysler Keys? Well, Oklahoma State, they wanted to strike first, strike fast. That's not going to happen. Kansas been on the board first, but Oklahoma State could strike in their first possession as well. Balance, get everybody involved, not just the triplets. Get some of uh, the supporting cast involved as well. In hidden yards, put Kansas on a long field and discourage them. 
third and two and Hunter easily gets the first down past the 15 yard line drew Dudley on the tackle Oklahoma State comes into today's game with a record of nine and one with their only loss 51 41 to the number eight team in the nation the Nebraska Cornhuskers Oklahoma State has scored a touchdown in the red zone Ooh. about 70 percent of the time they finish in the red zone can they today this is the true freshman Joseph Randall and Joseph Randall is to the goal line tries to lean in and down at the oh, one man. it will be first and goal. I'll tell you what coach Wickline does a great job with this offensive line watching them on tape from the end zone. They look like they're choreographed. They look like synchronized swimmers on land. Everybody steps with the same footwork. It's amazing and they do a great job and they got the perimeter for Randall and they're going to take another look at this to make sure that Randall is under short. Further review. Was his knee down and when his knee was down was the ball short of the goal line. Remember just the tip of the football has to hit the very tip front portion of the goal line Randall using his block as well look at the blocking downfield by the wideouts I mean that's outstanding by Antium he stretches Ooh, I'm not sure the knee was down he did a good job of stretching the football is the knee down stretching the ball his knees not down yet contact stretch touchdown I think it's a touchdown I don't think his knee hit the ground once again look at the contact balance Stay up, stretch. I, I think he's in. I think the ball crosses the goal line before his knee hits down. Outstanding effort. Yards after contact. He's still not down yet. The ball is in the end zone. Was that right knee on the ground? I'm not sure if there's evidence that would reverse. If they signal touchdown on the field, I don't think they'd reverse it. If they signal it short, they may not reverse it. It may not be indisputable, but I thought one angle showed that that right knee still had not gotten down before he stretched that football. It's close, though. You can see the number of instant replays we've had reviewed this year and 34 have been overturned. The amazing thing Steve these guys are poetry in motion what they can do with their body control that that's that's an unbelievable thing getting hit by two guys keep your legs off the ground and, and have the presence of mind to stretch the football like that those guys always amaze me and that's called the, the nose for the goal line these guys sense touchdown opportunities and they want them desperately. There is Mike Gundy in his sixth year at his alma mater. He was a great Oklahoma State quarterback from 86 through 89 and set so many big eight passing records. But here's the call. When his knee hit the ground, it is a touchdown. Yeah, there was enough evidence. I thought, you know, based on effort. You got to get that kid a touchdown. That's an unbelievable effort. Dave, isn't it great that Joseph Randall, whose brother John played for Kansas, scores the first touchdown for the Cowboys? Look at the determination, Steve. He gets hit high low, still keeps his body off the ground and, and pierces the, the goal line with the football when he stretches it out. That's, I mean, a tip of the cap to you, Joseph Randall, who's a true freshman. That's big time in a big game. Now one of the best kickers in the Big 12 Dan Bailey will try and tie the game at seven and he has been fantastic this year and puts it right through. So Joseph Randall with a 14 yard touchdown run ties the game for Oklahoma State. Seven seven ball game in Lawrence Kansas Big 12 football today's game is being shown on AFM the American Forces Network broadcasting to the United States Armed Forces serving in 175 countries and aboard ships at sea they're watching around the world in Iraq Germany Italy Southwest Asia South Korea and Japan welcome and a big shout out to my nephew Luke Fiziak who's serving our country in the U.S. Army in Afghanistan he's watching today and I'll tell you each and every one of you thank you for your service and God bless you you make us all proud to be Americans Thank you for letting us do what we do. Oklahoma State and Kansas, the Jayhawks are three and seven and one and five with their only win, the incredible comeback two weeks ago against Colorado. They'll take it at the 20 yard line. It's time for a Phillips Television's game break. Let's go to Darren Horton. Well, Steve, the one loss team's making their case today in Ann Arbor. No John Clay, no problem. Monty Ball left side powers his way 19 yards towards the goal line. After a lead play, they reverse the touchdown call. Ball scores on the next play. Number seven with a 7 nothing lead. Steve. 
Darren Wisconsin went for 83 last week <laughs> that was sensational I'll tell you they 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 could be Rose Bowl bound they may take control well the way Boise State played and so many unbeatens who knows who will show up in that Rose Bowl let's take a look at what Kansas did right out of the gate I'll tell you they just say okay let's go vertical over 30 yards down the football field first play of the game to Amiji and then go back to Amiji but with Wilson throwing the football on the reverse pass went right after Oklahoma State now back to James Sims in a very short game here so it'll be third down and long Quinn Meekham is the quarterback we talked to Chuck Long the offensive coordinator for Kansas and he said they'd be very creative today and they would attack the Cowboys and, and they did I mean basically Turner Gill and Chuck Long made a statement to their offense. We are going to get after it. They came out with a gadget gimmick play right away. They're not going to leave any bullets in the chamber. They're firing all of them today. Makeham is the third quarterback who has started for KU this year. They opened the season with Kale Pick, then went with the freshman Jordan Webb. Now at the junior college transfer, Quinn Makeham. Makeham looking downfield, completes the pass for a first down. That's Damon Patterson up past the 30 yard line. Johnny Thomas on the tackle and they want to get the ball to Patterson in space Patterson does a great job of finding the hole in the zone great route he gets Johnny Thomas backing off comes back for the football Johnny Thomas tries to rip it out of there Patterson says nah baby nah move the chains Patterson 53 catches that leads the team Make him looks right. He wants to come back left and throws it away because Quigley was well covered. And how about Oklahoma State? You've got the quarterback looking right, but the defense didn't give way. They saw something. Yeah, that, that was a good read. Bill Young, the defensive coordinator for Oklahoma State, schools his players as well as anybody. And man, Gent was out there. That linebacker red screen right now. He could have been the intended receiver. And Bill Young wants to batten down the hatches after that first 80 yard touchdown drive by the Jayhawks. Second and 10. Make him quick toss to Kale Pitt, a former quarterback, but because he's one of the top athletes on the team, they wanted to get him on the field. Absolutely. Why let him just waste away on the sidelines? If you get your best athletes out there. Plus, you know what, Steve? He sees this position through a quarterback's eyes. He was in the quarterback meetings the whole season, so he knows exactly what the quarterback's seeing, and that's a plus. I mean, Kerry Meyer, Kerry Meyer, they did that with the, at, uh, at, at University of Kansas City. Kerry Meyer, you know, he, he couldn't win the quarterback position. They, they moved him to wide receiver, had a brilliant career. I formation, third and two. Fullback is Stephen Foster. They give it to Sims. He slams forward. I don't think he got it. Needed to get the 43. Quigley, excuse me, on the carry instead of James Sims. So Angus, the senior, on the carry. And there is Jet on the tackle. First big decision for Turner Gill. Do you go for it? Do you punt it away? You saw what Oklahoma State can do. They play fast break football offensively. Is he going to go for it? And maintain the football and keep Oklahoma State's offense on the sideline. He decides it's too long a distance. If I don't get it, it's a short field for Oklahoma State. But this is what that dynamic offense does. It makes you think differently on four downs. Where's four down territory on the football field? And he's he's looking basically, he's looking to win this football game. Alonzo Rojas will punt to Josh Cooper. Fair catch called for and made at the 22 yard line. But with Oklahoma State, the way they run their offense, 80 yards might be a short field. They, they are amazing. And how about their response? I mean, they come right out in the football field down 7 0. No panic. Dana Holgerson, you see him talking to his offense right now. He said, Let's see how many times in a row we can score, guys. Let's get after it. We're one for one. Possession number two. Let's see what we can do on this one. These guys, it's a track meet, Steve, but instead of a baton, they're handing off a football and passing a football. From the 23-yard line, first down for Oklahoma State, a team that averages 45 points per game. Kendall Hunter on the cutback. He should have lost three. He gains about two. Tackled by Jake Laptad. He's playing his final game in this stadium. And Kendall Hunter gets on you quickly. He can make you miss. He can run you over and run away from you. Very few running backs in the country have the ability to do all three of those things. Quickness, power, and speed. That's a one-two-three punch. 
closing in on 1,400 yards this year. Brandon Whedon, big arm, throws, completes the pass, short of the first down. They'll mark it at the 33. Woo, they're going to give him a good spot. Yeah, they, he got he got blown up and knocked backwards after reset, receiving that football, and they make it a third and convertible situation. And you mentioned it, big arm. I mean, he has a howitzer hanging off that right shoulder. That was a tight window, and we just fit it right in there. Former pro baseball player who joined Oklahoma State in 2007. They run the middle, get the first down. That's Kendall Hunter. And Hunter, he was a midseason first team All American this year. As a sophomore, he ran for the sixth best total in Cowboy history 1,565 yards. Then injured much of last year and only gained 382. But look at the 100 yard games he's had this season. He's got a block in front of him, Bryant Ward, that's dynamic. The catch made by Josh Cooper up near another first down for Oklahoma State. Drew Dudley on the tackle. And this is the heart and soul of this Oklahoma State offense. The inside receivers, the slot receivers, Josh Cooper, Bo Bowling, big time. These guys make a lot of plays, and they are tough, hard-nosed, blue-collar guys. Blackman is in single coverage, and Whedon will hand the football off to Hunter. And look at this. This little guy is 5 feet 8 inches tall, 200 pounds. They had him at the 45 yard line and he bowls his way to midfield and John Williams is the defensive line that had him. He's 6'3", 290 and Hunter's dragging him like he's a rag doll. I mean you talk about lower body strength and leg drive. He's got it once again Blackman covered by one DB Weeden back to throw dumps it off catch made by Joseph Randall cuts back. Randall to the 30. Randall to the 20 yard line. Oh, man. I'll tell you, so many weapons, Steve, and Whedon can get everybody involved. Randall with a violent cut in the open field. He left linebackers with broken ankles. Watch the cut. The linemen do a great job. Watch the center guard get up out in front. The big boys get downfield. Oh, broken ankles with that cutback. I'll tell you, he is dynamic. 29 yards by Joseph Randall, who scored the first touchdown for Oklahoma State. Weeden downfield, intended for Blackman, but into coverage and broken up by Greg Brown. He couldn't lead him like he wanted to because Philip Strozier was in the area. Watch one, well, watch 26, undercut it, or 16, I should say, undercuts it right there. Chris Harris, and he, if he led him, he felt like Chris Harris was going to deflect it. So he had to throw it at him, and it ended up a little bit behind him. Blackman now goes to the sideline. Whedon on second and ten with Hunter in the backfield with Brandon. Hunter, right side to the 16 yard line. The first and ten line is brought to you by Phillips Televisions. Steve, you know what makes Dana Horgelson so hard to defend as a play caller? Second and long, he'll run it. Third and short, he'll throw it. He's a contrarian thinker, and you never know what he's going to do, how he's going to. He's a mad scientist that gets in that playbook and comes up with a different formula every week. He was delightful to talk to this week, just the way he calls plays and thinks about his players. Whedon tries to force it to Blackman, broken up. It will be third down. Fourth down, fourth down and four, I beg your pardon. And they're going to have to settle for the field goal. And here we are, single season receiving yards leaders in Oklahoma State history. Woods, Bryant, and closing fast, seven yards away, eight yards from taking the lead, Justin Blackman. Dan Bailey will attempt a 32 yard field goal. Bailey's been sensational this year, 20 of 22 on his field goals. And Dan puts it up. And through, and the Cowboys have their first lead of the game. It's 10 7 over the Kansas Jayhawks. Oklahoma State takes the 10 7 lead. They've got plenty of playmakers, and so do we. And we're going to send it to our playmaker, Jim Knox, for the out of kickoff. Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> I like it, Noxie. Noxie, put a face mask on it and jump in the action, bro. <laughs> that guy is an avocado magnet. He loves his Hass avocados. Quinn Sharp will be kicking off. Well, he's uh, he's two for two. Two kicks, two touchbacks. Leads the country. He's now got 48 touchbacks on the season. A little bit of wind behind him. Hammers it to the one. This will be returned. And it's DJ Bashirs to the 23 yard line. First down for the Jayhawks after they took their first possession and went 80 yards. Well, they've been, neither team has punted. Or no, Kansas punted on their last possession. But they, they've had two possessions. They scored a touchdown on one of them. Oklahoma State's had it twice. They've scored a touchdown field goal. It's going to be that kind of game. Who's going to make the other team punt? Who's going to turn the other team over? Who's going to get the ball on downs? And limit an opportunity, limit a possession. James Sims will now go motion to the right side. And Meekum throws it over the middle to Omiji. Omiji had that big catch on their first drive of 36 yards that led to a touchdown from Meekum to Tim Beery. Well, this is Meekum's strength. Spread the field, and he's a West Coast offense kind of guy. He throws horizontally. Not a big vertical stretch the field guy, but he stretches the field sideline to sideline and makes you defend the entire width of the football field, and he reads coverage as well. Sims cuts back nicely, up close to a first down, needed to get to the 33-yard line. You know, Steve, uh, a, a freshman now, true freshman, usually it takes running backs a long time to be as patient as he is and let his guys do their work in front of him and, and, and then press the line of scrimmage like he does. This kid is way ahead of the game. Fake to Sims. They'll throw it back right. Intended ah. for the ruffle back, and they've got a roughing situation on Hugo Chinasa, the senior from Richardson, Texas, got in the face of, o, of Quinn Meekum. Now, he deflected the ball. But then he uh, then he abused Meekum. You know, it can't Personal be. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Number 91 of the defense. Penalties 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. Now, you can't have pass interference after deflection, but you can have a roughing the quarterback after deflection. He deflects it and then comes right in the throat and delivers a double punch to the throat. <laughs> and that that's that's good martial arts, but uh, <laughs> with the official standing right there, you no can do. Man, that was like kung fu right there. Chinasa showing his black belt abilities. <laughs> right. And Quinn Meekham has a first down near the 49. Looks downfield, has time. Going deep. Omichi's out there. Broken up at the 10 yard line. Roderick Brown. Again, Chuck Long is a little bit gun shy about throwing the ball deep because Meekham's arm strength is not quite there. A couple of deep balls that he called in, against Nebraska were underthrown and one intercepted. This one just underthrown, and because of that, it allows Roderick Brown the recoverability speed that he has to get back and make a play on it. If he throws it out there and leads his receiver a little bit more to the middle of the field in the end zone, Omiji's got a touchdown. Ball underthrown, too much air under it. Throwing it into the wind, too. Second down and 10. Jonathan Wilson will only gain two, a fine defensive play by Broderick Brown. It's interesting, Chuck Long told us Quinn Meekin is more of a horizontal sure. quarterback and Jordan Webb is a vertical quarterback. Right, but, but, and he's shown early in the game against the win, first play of the game into the win, go deep, over 30 yards, tries it again. So he's gonna caution to the win in this football game. He says, I wanna keep evaluating Meekin and see if he can get that deep ball done little more arm strength because this kid sees the field. He had 19 straight completions, a school record earlier in the season. Only a three-man rush by Oklahoma State. They complete the pass to the 40-yard line, and they will get the first down. Damon Patterson with a nice grab with the defense all over him. And this is Meekum at his best right here. These short intermediate routes, look where he puts it. That's a perfect spot. His receiver, he trusts his receiver, is going to body up the defender. Damon Patterson puts his body in front of the defender, puts his body between the ball and the defender, and makes a great sliding catch. He is a very accurate quarterback, gets the first down to the 40-yard line. Beery, the tight end, goes motion right, back to throw, make him in trouble, escapes, 
He will get another first down, angling his way to the 23-yard line. Meekham had eyes in the back of his head. McGee finalizes the last line to defense, but Meekham slides away from the pressure. Now the blitz came from the backside. Bill Young heated it up. Meekham sensed it, felt it, and cut back against it, and there's nobody there. I mean, they lost their rush lane integrity, and once he broke the line of scrimmage, he had some real estate. And Turner Gill likes what he's seeing. His quarterback improvising, creating, extending plays with his feet and legs. Chuck Long told us yesterday that Meekham is faster than you think. Now the Wildcat, they will run James Sims, and Sims down the left sideline will score the touchdown! Touchdown! How about that? The Jayhawks answer. Oklahoma State answered the Jayhawks. The Jayhawks answer Oklahoma State. Both of these teams, it's like a boxing match, and they're throwing haymakers, trying to knock each other out. They want to get the ball in James Sims's hands at least 20 times. A good way to make sure it gets in his hands is direct snap it to him and out leverage them with additional blockers because the guy you're snapping the football to is the runner. So you can have an extra hat at the point of attack. Coach Gundy knows he's in for a dogfight. Brandstetter hits it through. They're waving the weed at KU. Oklahoma State fans and coaches a little bit stunned early as the Jayhawks, who only scored three against Nebraska, have 14. Look at they, they pull the linemen. They have a lead blocker. They're out leverage. Look at everybody's blocked up. Outstanding effort at the point of attack. Everybody's covered up. They're one man short. Sims takes it to the house. Look at the, look at the blocking. I mean, the, the blocking is extraordinary. Doing an outstanding job is is uh, for James Sims getting to that linebacker level and sealing people off. And this kid now, he's got vision. He's got patience. He's got cutback ability. He's he's the real deal. They have scored more than once in a quarter for only the second time in the last 26 quarters. Of course, right. they scored 28. They had a, 35. They, were, they scored 35 points right. in the fourth quarter against Colorado and then amazing comeback. And Sims had three of those touchdowns. Yeah. He rushed for 75 yards and three touchdowns in the fourth quarter against Colorado. They so, trailed by 28. Right. They had to score 35 to win the game, which they did. And now we've got Kansas kicking off to Gilbert and Thomas. Gilbert on the return. And Justin past the 30. Justin near the 30. Nine yard line. Fans coming up later. College football Saturday continues. First, it's the big game. Andrew Luck and surging number six Stanford have their sights set on a BCS berth, but bitter rival Cal is out to spoil their plans. Then, under the lights, Blaine Gabbard and number 15 Mizzou battle Iowa State. The action continues at 3 30 Eastern, 12 30 Pacific. Shane Vereen had a sensational game against Stanford last year. Andrew Luck, a Heisman Trophy candidate this year, having a great year for the Cardinals. UCLA does it on the ground. Luck can do it in the air and on the ground. Very versatile. Downfield, Whedon throws it away. Lived to fight another day. Justin Blackman was his intended receiver. But you see, number 24 has been in that area all day long. And that's Brady McDougal, who is making his first career defense to start at safety. He's got 13 starts as a wideout in his career, but he played some defense last year, had five tackles and interception. They've got him starting at safety today against this spread offense with his athleticism. Play action, Whedon rolling right. Blackman breaks the tackle, first down past the 50-yard line. Man, the arm strength. This guy was a former professional pitcher in the Yankees system, and we saw him wind up and throw a dart to Blackman. He can spin it, Steve. There's no question. And look at how big Blackman is. Look at Blackman when he breaks the tackle. Look at that. It's kind of like a man amongst kids out there. Look at how much bigger he is. He's bigger, faster, stronger, and he's got the heart of a champion. I'll tell you, the kid is a dynamic football player. They go back to Kendall Hunter. Who escapes for about four or five yards, tackled by Tobin Opurum. And that's the that's the, the, the stress that Oklahoma State puts on the defense. You have to unload the box to take care of all these wide receivers. They spread the field. When you unload the box, then the running back takes it right up the gut because they've got numbers advantage inside. I mean, they're they're so versatile. 
Hunter big hole first down 35 yard line down to the 32. Hogan Todu on the tackle. Now you say oh man I got to stop the run. As soon as you drop a safety in the box they'll throw it. So they put you between a rock and a hard place and they have as good a weapons in the country to put you between that rock and a hard place. Hunter now has 44 yards rushing that gives him 1400 this year. Kentle trying to get back so he'll lose a yard so now he's under 1400 but what a spectacular season Hunter Blackman and Whedon have had it could be the second time in college football history that we have a quarterback throw for over 3500 a running back go for over 1500 and a receiver go for over 1500 amazing and the big three is not Miami it's in Stillwater well, fans you are watching Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Phillips Televisions. It's time for our direct TV game summary a lot of offense early. Oh look at this. I mean you talk about a track meet. Oklahoma State's averaging over eight yards a snap Kansas seven and a half. I mean defense is just getting ripped apart and the running backs are averaging a big yards per carry Kansas scores twice two touchdowns in the first quarter. I mean they got in their end zone twice and Oklahoma State was only able to get in there once. Oklahoma State trails by four. This is the number 10 team in America. They have a second down 11 situation. At the Kansas 34 Whedon back to throw. Wow. Nice grab. And that's Josh Cooper brought it in with one hand and gets it to the 26 yard line. Boy, you talk about poise and composure. I mean, he knows he knows there's a defender in the area and he knows he's got to reach back and make the play. And he and he pulls it in so quickly. I mean, he didn't leave it out there for Greg Brown to sniff around out of Kansas. He brought it right to his body. Big play. Made his quarterback look good. Third and three Hunter through pounds his way for the first down Chris Harris on the tackle again this Oklahoma State offensive line is doing a great job at the line of scrimmage Joe Wick line has coached these guys up the sum of the total is better than any individual part but a guy that I think is going to be a big time player number 73 Mr. Adcock Levi Adcock if right tackle he can click. Whedon looking left. Now he will scramble and run and then throw the football and the catch is made for the touchdown. Josh Cooper in the corner of the end zone. I was watching Whedon and I wanted to see if he was past the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he's got a great awareness. And, and remember, your whole body, everything has to be past the line of scrimmage. And he said to Cooper, you know what? You made me look good. You bailed me out with that behind your body, one-handed catch. I'm going to reward you with a touchdown, Coop. I mean, step up, step into the pocket, deliver the football, and, and throw a strike. I mean, that is accurate on the move. Tremendous throw, excellent catch. In baseball, they say guys have easy gas where it looks so comfortable coming out of the hands and it gets there at 95 miles an hour. Mr. Whedon has easy gas. And he can paint the black. I mean, he's <laughs> got that right. He's accurate. <laughs> he is very accurate. And another touchdown throw from Brandon Whedon. 17-14 Cowboys. Brandon Whedon to Josh Cooper. Cooper's fourth touchdown of the year, but Whedon's getting a little closer to Josh Fields season record of 31 touchdown passes in a year that took place in 2002 week now with 28 touchdown passes mm. in his first year as a starter. He is cool calm collected unflappable. He's got the demeanor you like when he comes in the huddle you know he's good and you know he's not going to be uh, basically taken out of his game. Kansas brings it back. The Jayhawks have it out past the 27 yard line and it will recap the story. This is just a great play by Meekham extending creating himself some time and space and he finds Fury as big tight end and then Randall with a tremendous effort to cross the goal line with the football and another true freshman Sims out of the Wildcat outnumbers people and takes it to the house. That's the last touchdown. Nice job coming to the line of scrimmage. Whedon has good field awareness, delivers a strike to Cooper. Josh Fields, who went to play baseball with the Kansas City Royals now.
thirty one touchdown passes in two thousand two shows baseball over football make them getting the pass up to the right side he is now eight of ten and he could be very accurate as a matter of fact you might remember that tremendous comeback Meekum led Kansas over Colorado and he set the KU record with 17 consecutive completions against the Buffaloes right and then the against Nebraska he completed his first two for 19 in a row and then he went one for 13 the rest of the game against the Cornhuskers yeah they noticed that Nebraska has pretty good defensive speed right <laughs> this is Bashir's not much third down and long Oklahoma State's running to the football a lot better I saw six guys around the football right there. They're getting off blocks and starting to run. You know, I, I honestly think that what happened in their travel and, you know, kind of throwing their schedule off a little bit early, early alarm clock it affected them somewhat. Defensively, I don't think they were there from the, from the first snap. Everybody loves a routine. Oklahoma State out of their routine. But Billy Young. He's the defensive coordinator for the Cowboys and he said to us earlier this week don't let KU believe they can win and right now KU has the confidence but this time Oklahoma State uh -oh, uh -oh. is there and flags all over the place. They drag Meekum out of down and instead of fourth down and punting now it may result in a Jayhawk first down. Yeah right it's going to be unnecessary rough. After the play was over personal foul with unnecessary roughness number 42 of the defense 15 yard penalty. First down. And, and, and Jen has to realize, you know, he has to know where he is on the field. You know, you've run him out of bounds. Now, once you see, okay, you're running him, his teammates running him, here comes Jen, and just out of bounds, he delivers another hit. You know, you have to realize, once he's in that five yard white area, he's out of bounds. Now, if the hit had been initiated while quarterback Meekham is still on the field to play, the that's okay, but he had already stepped out of bounds. All boys. Meekham. Looking downfield, throws the pass, completes it, first down, out of bounds at the 36. Johnny Thomas, be careful. You don't want to do the same thing two plays in a row. And Bill Young's not going to like that personal foul. Oklahoma State's defense was off the field. That was a third down play. Personal foul keeps the drive alive, first down by penalty, then come right out and stretch the field again with Patterson. That's a good guy to stretch it to. Cowboys currently lead by three, but the Jayhawks offense is playing well. And here's a run, and it's a good one by James Sims. The first and ten line is brought to you by Phillips Televisions. Steve Biziak, Dave Lapham, Jim Knox with you in Lawrence, Kansas. Cowboys have the lead. Sims cuts to the outside, gets it to the 30-yard line. And Ori Lemon makes the tackle. They'll mark it to the 29, so they'll still need about three more for the first down. And, and what will Oklahoma State do? Will they stiffen their neck and make this a field goal opportunity only, or will Kansas State take full advantage and score a touchdown? Self destruction by personal foul penalty on the defense. Again, they had Kansas State's offense off the field and let them off the hook. Make them. Well, they rule this complete. We will see Jonathan Wilson on the catch, and they say he did make the catch at the 21 yard line. Bill Young was at Kansas when this young man was at Kansas, and he said Jonathan Wilson was one of our better wide receivers. Bill Young, defensive coordinator, has great respect for him, and that's a tremendous play. He goes to the ground, keeps his left arm under the football. Jonathan Wilson, tremendous effort in possession of the football. Out of the Wildcat, James Sims with a short gain inside the 20-yard line. Talking to Bill Young earlier this week, he had a great line about motivation, about getting ready for a team like Kansas. And he said, KU is a 3-17. and 17. And he said, if we take care of business, they'll be 3-8. and eight. Right. And, and his whole thing was kill the will. Yeah. And Kansas has come out with a lot of will. And so far, Oklahoma State has not been able to kill the will. Kansas is fighting, and that's a good sign for Turner Gill. Empty backfield. Meekum going right. Catch is made. Damon Patterson inside the seven-yard line. He, got, he got, originally got matched up on Sean Lewis, the linebacker, beat him. And then another linebacker had to come in and finalize Justin Jett. And just to, when, when you have Patterson inside working on linebacker, Sean Lewis is very athletic, but not athletic enough to stay with Patterson. This guy has jackhammer feet. 
He can make you miss in space. A running play. Quigley to the five. First and goal. Will Kansas again? Your key is score seven. Don't settle for three. We've made Oklahoma State settle for three one time. Let's make sure we keep scoring touchdowns because Oklahoma State is going to put pressure on our defense and probably score more touchdowns. You're going to have to score more than 21 points to beat Oklahoma State. This, if you score this touchdown, that can't be the end of it. This one could be an all-out trap. They run the football. James Sims or DJ Bashirs, and Balls it is Bashirs, and he fumbles the football. Oklahoma State has been one of the most opportunistic teams in college football this year. They lead the Big 12 in turnovers forced. 27 of them. And 14 of them have been fumbles. And there's a tug of war going on now. I mean, who, whoever comes out with it has the strongest hands, wrists, and forearms. Kansas says they still have it. Now, third down. Big Big third down play here. Bashirs gets get, gets into the pile, and people are gripping and ripping at the football and, and, and putting his, his helmet on it and shoulder pads on it. Sean Lewis looked like he knocked it out of there. From the one-yard line, Oklahoma State now bringing in their heavy load defensive personnel. Fifth in the nation in turnovers. This time, Kansas recovers. Quigley is the back. He will get to the goal line, but he will not get in. And now yep. Turner Gill has to take that chance. They're Absolutely. three and seven. Absolutely. And if and if you don't score, Oklahoma State's on the shadow of your own goal line. You have to have confidence that your defense can get the football back for you. I think there's no question you go for it right now. And, and he's showing confidence in his offensive line and, and everybody in the offensive side of the football and his defense, because if it doesn't work out, He's going to expect his defense to go out there and make Oklahoma State's offense go one, two, three, and out and get the ball right back to his offense. Gill said this week field goals will not beat Oklahoma State. It must be touchdowns. On fourth down, the give, the carry. No. Oklahoma State's defense holds. That's like a turnover. You know, it's like you fumbled the football at the goal line because you lose possession. It doesn't go into the turnover category, but Bill Young it loves the fact that his defense rose up on the goal line and had a goal line stand. It starts with the defensive line. You have to get penetration. Who wins the line of scrimmage? Oh, there's a lot of white jerseys and white helmets knocking the line of scrimmage backwards. Oklahoma State's defensive linemen take control, and downhill come the linebackers. Big 12 college football Saturday. Kansas down by three, could not get in. Well, we'd like to congratulate the Oklahoma State Cowgirls soccer team for advancing to the NCAA quarterfinals after beating Duke last night 2-0. The Cowgirls will face the winner of the North Carolina-Notre Dame match over Thanksgiving weekend. Wow. Congratulations, Cowgirls. How about that? Pitching a shutout in such an important game. And, and look, Dana Holgerson, he'll still spread the field. He doesn't care being backed up. How about this at the goal line? Is that a safety? They mark it just outside the goal line. Jayhawks wanted the safety. The first man there to meet Hunter was Steven Johnson, number 52. Remember, the entire football has to get outside of the goal line, just the opposite of scoring a touchdown. The entire ball has to come outside, and it definitely does. It comes out to about the three-quarter yard line, and that's where they mark it. Good call. 99 yards. To pay dirt. Whedon slips it out, and it is Justin Blackman making the catch at the 11 yard line, very close to a first down. How about that? You know, stay poised, stay calm, cool, calm, collected. Whedon's got himself an all American weapon. Get the football to him on the sideline. Boy, he can gun it. It got there in a heartbeat. Blackman came in needing 70 yards to go over 1,500. The carry up the middle, Kendall Hunter bowls his way to the 18-yard line. 
This team is magnificent offensively. They're first in scoring in the Big 12, 45 points per game, first in total offense. You know, watch, watch this, this uh, motion man, this fullback right here. Watch him turn it upfield. Whoa! That's taken on the linebacker. Bryant Ward makes a heck of a play. Paulson involved as well. But Bryant Ward leaving that field on an isolation was big time. Illegal uh, uh, motion. Got some motion on Oklahoma State. Prior to the snap, ball start. Number 75 of the offense. Five yard penalty. Remain second down. Nick Martinez early in his movement. When you're 6'4, 315, you can't hide. You love these big guys in the front line for the Cowboys averaging 6'4, 310. You know, 10 sacks a game, 10 games. That's one sack per contest in 403 attempts. I mean, that's unbelievable. Sacks per pass are unreal. Screen. Randall breaks one tackle. Almost breaks another, leans forward, and gets the first down. Chris Harris, that's a young man who really understands the game. He knew where that first down line was. And he had himself an athletic lineman in front of him. Grant Garner, number 74. Let's show him out in front on the screen. Watch big number 74 in the white jersey get out in front. Now, this is an offensive lineman. Nice job. Garner peels him right off of there. 6'3", 290-plus pounds, showing athleticism in space. City of Wichita, Kansas has always produced great athletes going back to the basketball days with Darnell Valentine and Antoine Carr and of course pretty good running back from Wichita Barry Sanders oh. who played for Oklahoma State. If there is no timeout on the field. We will page from the replay booth. The previous play is under further review. Previous plays under further review. OK well Barry Sanders is sets the gold standard. Coach Gundy can't believe it now they're, they're saying okay where's the spot of the football it, it, where's is his body down before he stretches that ball out there I guess they're disputing the spot coach Gundy's saying that's the first down they've spotted it short by about a half a yard and once again Joseph Randall how about the body control he has to be able to keep his body off the ground in the presence of mind to stretch that thing out like he does this is a true freshman this guy understands football Look at him patting his offensive line. Good move. Well, when, guys Hunter, take care of you. when Hunter is off for the NFL next year, that young man is the heir to the throne. They, okay, he plays off the block by Garner. And then watch. As he, as he turns it up the football field, he knows where the chains are. Okay, where's the knee? As he stretches the football, Ooh. the knee's not down. I mean, that's an unbelievably athletic play. He looks like Barishnikov in pads. I mean, that's that's ballet. That's poetry in motion. And he's got some strong muckers. He squeezes that football and stretches it out like it's a grapefruit. Take a look at this poetry in motion again. Watch him. Now, he's fighting off a tackle, breaking a tackle, changes the ball to his left hand, stretches it out, keeps his leg and hip off the ground. Unbelievable play by Randall. You got to give him a gold star on the forehead, and more importantly, a first down instead of third and short. After further review, when the runner was down, the ball was over the line again. Therefore, it is a first down. Please reset the game clock to 6:30. There is no timeout charge to Oklahoma State. He's an optical illusion to the officials. They can't believe that his body control is that good that his body hasn't touched when he stretches it. Great job by the replay crew, and let's go to Jim Knox. Right here, actually, Steve, Mike Gundy got the official's attention. He saw it went over the yard marker, and that was a first down, so he had to come down here and call a timeout to the officials, and that was a key for the replay right there, guys. Yeah, he gave them time to do their job, and not only the replay, but what about our guys, our camera guys, getting unbelievable shots? I mean, our super slow-mo freezing it and letting them know that hey he wasn't down good job guys great shots Wayden drops the football still was the covers and completes the pass downfield for about a seven eight yard gain to Josh Cooper okay Steve we talked about composure potential tragedy he doesn't worry about it rolls right off his back yep let me just stay with the play I'll get out of pocket now I know I have to vacate the pocket I can still chuck it. This guy is the real deal. And he said baseball really helped him with that. He said giving up a home runs like throwing an interception. You got to let it go. Yep. Well, here is Hunter up the middle gaining that first down. This guy is unbelievable. What a combination of power and speed. 
He really is. When you when you think about Hunter, you think about you know all the quickness making this, but he's 5'8 and he's 200 pounds. If he were 6'1, he'd weigh about 230. I mean, this guy is on, on a 5 foot 8 inch frame to have 200 pounds of muscle. It's like trying to tackle a quadricep in, in a pectoral. He gives you no hitting surface. Weed with plenty of time. Blackman over the middle. Blackman up to the 45 yard line, too shy of a first down. Ogan Todu brings him down. They need to get Ogan Todu on the field. He's a safety now playing linebacker, but a guy who can be physical. And Blackman, got, when he got taken down, he kind of wrenched that left leg a little bit. He's kind of trying to walk it off, either knee or ankle. You can see he's got something on that left calf. He's already got like rubberized on there to kind of keep that warm, so he's got some left leg issues. Second down and one. Whedon fires complete. Wow, this team is just cutting apart the Kansas Jayhawks defense. Colton Shelf only his 10th catch of the year. He's the junior from Enid, Oklahoma, who made that catch, and Isaiah Barfield had to make the tackle. You know, the comeback routes that they run, they run a pattern, and then they work their way back to the quarterback about five yards and come back to receive the football and to get separation from the defenders. Every route they run, they work back to the quarterback to find separation in space. They're fantastic at it. Kendall Hunter sweeping left. Breaking tackles, getting the first down inside the 25-yard line. Once again, they had him at the line of scrimmage, and he winds up with about 15. You can't arm tackle this guy. You have to put a thump on him, get your helmet across his body, helmet across the bow, and wrap him up. This team can run it on you, they can throw it on you, and this guy will get you yards after contact. Blackman will get you yards after catch. This is good a yakety yak team as there is in the country. Blackman's back in the game, leading the block into the right side and spinning near the 20 yard line. Is Oklahoma State as they started this drive from their own one yard line. On the reverse, it was Isaiah Anderson, the sophomore from Wichita Falls, Texas. That's the key, Steve. They start from the shadow of their own goal line inside the one yard line. And normally, they'd be in the end zone by now. But they've had to cover so much real estate, but the fact they're doing it and being balanced is amazing. Jeremy Smith now in the backfield, and he'll get the call and the carry. And Smith to the 10 yard line for a first down. Yeah, Kansas needs a big play defensively. Turner Gill, when he spoke to us earlier in the week, he said they he felt they needed to be plus three in turnovers to win the game. And that's been their uh, Achilles heel all season. They're not explosive enough, sudden enough. They have five takeaways in their last two weeks. They only had five in their first eight games. Ten takeaways in ten games. It's not going to cut it. You need more than that. What will Oklahoma State do in the red zone on this scoring opportunity? Weedon, play action, down the middle, incomplete. Boy, it looked like Michael Harrison was hit yep. as the ball was in the air, but no flags came flying. He was looking for interference on Isaiah Barfield. He thought Barfield kind of grabbed at his lower body before the arrival of the football. Let's see if he's got a complaint or not. Barfield, did he grab him? Kind of the throw made him jackknife a little bit. His back. If, if he let him, it's a touchdown. So. That's that's one of the more inaccurate passes you're going to see out of Weed. It really wasn't that bad. Second down with Hunter behind Weedon. You never know with Dana Holderson if he'll go pass or run. He's going to run right side. Hunter to the five to the four. You, Oklahoma State offensive line. It was, it was just great blocking. Everybody had a hat on a hat and finished their guy. I mean, they fit on the block, and then they kept their feet going and finished. Amazing. I mean, they turned nothing into something by just reestablishing the line of scrimmage down the field. Levy Adcock leading the way, number 73, the right tackle. He has had a great year. All Big 12 candidate. Hunter on third down. Wade looks to throw, scrambles left now, throws it away. Well, it looked like he's trying to get the football to Bryant Ward. Bryant Ward was stacked up. How about Kansas? If they're going to hold here to another field goal opportunity, that's pretty darn impressive. Dana Holgerson hates to settle for field goals in the red zone. 
and it's the second field goal opportunity for Oklahoma State in this football game. So Kansas's defense has bent but not break. And Carl Torbush thinks his defense is starting to get it figured out. The last six quarters coming into this football game, they played pretty darn well. Second half against Colorado, and four quarters up against Nebraska. Bailey made one from 32. He's now 21 of 23 in his field goal attempts this year. And he pushes this one through. So Oklahoma State led by Brandon Weed, who started that drive from his own one yard line, takes him downfield for three. When we come back, Darren Horton will be in our college football Saturday studio. Thank you very much Darren and that young man believes that the Jayhawks can win they have 207 total yards only 87 last week against Nebraska they lost that game 20 to 3. Quinn Sharp to kick off to D.J. Bashirs, and it's a short kick Kansas gets the football across their 30 yard line We've got a break in the action Jayhawks. Still in this against number 10, Oklahoma State. Kansas Jayhawks down by only six with two and a half left before halftime. This week on Fox NFL Sunday, Aaron Rodgers and the Packers take on the Vikings in what could be Brett Favre's final game against his old team. Or you've got the Lions and the Cowboys, the Cardinals and Chiefs. Coverage begins tomorrow at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific with the Ford. Fox NFL pregame show brought to you by the all new Ford F-150 built Ford Tough. How about the Cowboys responding to Coach Garrett? Played pretty darn well up in New York against the football Giants. Kansas has two and a half minutes to take the lead before halftime. Nice play to Damon Patterson, who's been their top receiver this year with over 50 catches. And Patterson. Very close to a first down. Another very versatile athlete has played some cornerback in his career here for the Jayhawks. Very accomplished wide receiver as well. There is a penalty. Personal five. foul. Contacted the helmet by number 91 of the defense. That's Penalties 15 yards added to the end of the run. That's first the second down. one on, on, uh, on Chinasa. He's got to stay away from the, the head. So there's been two on Chinasa. They had the uh, the personal foul on Gent out of bounds. Three personal foul penalties, 45 yards on three penalties. Bill Young will not like giving up half a football field virtually to Kansas with mistake penalties. They got a little early movement, a little flinch for Kansas. That will hurt. Right to the snap. False start. Offense number 43. Five yard penalty remains first down. First and 15, and you really believe that Kansas needs to score a touchdown here to gain that momentum back. They lost it when they were stopped on the fourth and goal at the one yard line, and Oklahoma State took it 99 Absolutely. yards for a field goal. They did limit them to three points. Right. It, it ended up being a 10 point swing. Could have been a 14 point swing. They limited the damage a little bit. Kansas going for the touchdown on fourth down didn't do it. Kale Pick is in the game. Meekum scrambling, and down he goes. Just past the line of scrimmage. Ball He'll be second down at about 14. Andrew McGee on the tackle as he was blitzing on the play. Pick now comes out. Tim Beery, the tight end, back in. No gain on the play. Second and 15 at the 48. Kansas came in at 3 and 7. Meekum having a solid game. 13 for 15 through the touchdown pass to Beery now goes on the draw and quickly gets it inside the 40 yard line to about the 39 so an important third down here against Oklahoma State good call by Chuck Long second and long go to the sprint draw a little bit of delay draw action let Oklahoma State get up the football field in their pass rush and then just on a, on a delay draw let them run right underneath those lanes. Cowboys showing blitz from the right side and also from the safety right side. Mika might be changing the play, recognizing the defensive adjustment. Cowboys do blitz from the right. Mika steps up, scrambles to his left, has a man open deep. Beery can't get it. He overthrew Tim Beery. Hedgepath was in the vicinity in coverage. Tim Beery tried to 
body him up and get separation a little bit. Tim Beery down the football field. You know, the thing about Meekum is he can extend and create. Now he buys himself not just space, but buys himself time. Pretty good action. And down the football field. Actually, it was uh, Broderick Brown in coverage. Or was it Hedgepath? 18 or 19? You couldn't really see. It was good coverage anyway. It was Hedgepath. So now on to punt, Alonzo Rojas standing at his 45 yard line. Play a game. Too much time. Delay a game. Five yard penalty. Offense remains fourth down. Not the worst thing in the world. It gives uh, gives the punter a little bit more field of play to work with. And most of them these days, instead of going cough and corner and trying to angle it, they kick it up the elevator shaft and try to let their guys get down in field and down it inside the 10 yard line. Josh Cooper will return it. He has brought back one for a touchdown this year. That was from 66 yards out. Cooper will let this one go and it goes into the end zone. So Cowboys will have it with 38 seconds left. This is a prolific offense we've seen all year long led by their trio of Whedon Blackman and Hunter but Kendall was part of a sophomore sensation with Zach Robinson and Des Bryant two years ago yeah and Kendall Hunter that 1555 yards led the Big 12 he got him some All-American mention so he's looking for his second Big 12 rushing title in the last three years and coming into this season Oklahoma State had led the Big 12 in rushing four straight years Whedon goes with the little delay draw off the left side to Kendall Hunter. A very short gain of a yard, maybe two. Stephen Johnson in the tackle to let that clock wind down. But Kansas has to be encouraged. Those last two drives, though, were a little demoralizing for a team that uh, you've got to figure their confidence is down a bit. Well, it, if they score on that fourth and short, they've got themselves a nice lead. They don't score. Oklahoma State goes down the field and adds to their three point lead with a field goal. But for Kansas to be in this game at the half, a one score football game, you know, they got to pull themselves up by the bootstraps. And one thing is, this football team is still engaged. Turner Gill has their attention. It'll be interesting to see what he tells them at the half. Oklahoma State has never won the South Division. And Jim Knox is with their coach, Mike Gundy. All right, thank you, Steve. Coach, I tell you what, your offense is moving the ball close to 300 yards of total offense right now. You got to be pleased with that. Well, the offense is doing a good job. We got to convert when we get inside the 10, and then we got to play better on defense. We got to slow them down a little bit, and we're getting some really dumb penalties that are allowing them to continue with drives. We got to we got to uh, eliminate those dumb penalties. Coach, thanks for the time. Halftime in Lawrence, Kansas. Right now, Oklahoma State leading Kansas at half, 20 to 14. Let's head to the Geico halftime show with Darren Horton. Darren. Thank you very much. The cheap seats in Lawrence, Kansas from the Oriad Hotel overlooking Memorial Stadium. Jayhawks playing well within six of the number 10 team in the nation, Oklahoma State. Steve Fiziak along with Dave Lapham, both teams offensively on the mark, and Kansas gave themselves a little bit of inspiration with that first drive. They really did. Oklahoma State averaged seven and a half yards per play. Kansas averaged six. They came right out and went down the football field, 80 yards on their first drive. And they finish it. Meekum creates time and space. He gets the ball to Beery's tight end in the middle of the end zone. And then following it up is Randall with a 14 yard run, tying the football game for Oklahoma State. Whedon does a good job stepping up at the pocket, finding Cooper for a 21 yard touchdown pass. And this is the big play. James Sims, they go for it on fourth down inside the one yard line. He gets stopped. Oklahoma State then goes a lot of yards and, and just settles for a field goal to extend the lead to six. Geico presents our players to watch in the second half. Whedon, 189 yards. That gives him over 3,500 this year. James Sims, 11 carries, 52 yards, and a touchdown. And with that score by James Sims, eight rushing touchdowns now this year. That's the most by a Jayhawk since Jake Sharp scored 12 two years ago. First downs, how about that? 31 first downs, 15 by Kansas. Here's the big story. Six penalties for 70 yards, Oklahoma State. 
three of those personal foul penalties for 45 yards. Got to play smarter. Let's go to Jim Knox. Well, I just got through talking to Turner Gill, the Kansas head coach. He told me we just got to make plays. I asked him what he told his team at halftime. He said, if we win the third quarter, we can win this game. We'll see what happens, guys. Thank you very much, Knoxie. There is Turner Gill, who did a marvelous job at Nebraska as a player and an assistant coach, and then led Buffalo to a conference title in his first three years. Took him to the International Bowl, first bowl game for Buffalo. I mean, had himself a, a good career over there. He'll always be remembered at Buffalo. He wants his defensive coordinator, Carl Torbush, to do a great job on this first drive. Well, here comes Oklahoma State. And Oklahoma State breaking tackles out of the 34 yard line. Justin Gilbert from Huntsville, Texas, the freshman, gets them in good field position. And here's Oklahoma State's first half possessions. Well, they only had four possessions. The last one basically was, you know, right before the half. They score two touchdowns, two field goals. They didn't punt the football. Quinn Sharp had two touchbacks, never punted the football. But 15 yard drives, 10 yard drives, bend but don't break. They settled for field goals when they ran 25 snaps. They only got six points out of 25 snaps. Kansas, ultimate bend but don't break. They give the no, they're going to go play action. And Weeds pass a little bit too tall for Justin Blackman. And we'll go with our Chrysler keys and update them for you. Well, KU scored first, but Oklahoma State came right back and scored as well to kind of negate that. Balance six players catch the football balance within the balance. They've run it. They've thrown it and a bunch of players have caught it and hidden yards. It's kind of even Steven there. They haven't really put Kansas on long field. They had to go long field because Kansas didn't score on fourth and less than a yard. And Oklahoma State had to start from their own one. Kansas rushes for giving Reed plenty of time completes the pass to Josh Cooper up close to a first down might be a yard shy. Cooper has had a terrific year closing in on 50 catches this season. Greg Brown pushed him out of bounds. I thought Dana Horgelson made a great point. The Kansas State game without Blackman, Cooper, Bowling, those guys found themselves and they found roles for those guys. They run Kendall Hunter and he is stopped short, I believe, of the first down. Yes, they mark him at the 37 yard line, 38 yard line. Needs to get to the 39 for a first down. So Mike Gundy must make a tough decision here. Oporum, nice penetration. And Oporum, now last year, he was one of the, the effective running backs for Kansas. And Oporum got switched to linebacker, then he got moved down to defensive end. And I'll tell you, they've done a great job of coaching him up. Buddy Wyatt, the defensive line coach, has gotten a forum into that defensive mentality, and Oklahoma State's going for it. How about that? A riverboat gambler is the coach, Mike Gundy, and he gives it to Hunter, and no. Hunter stopped! Wow. What a defensive stand by Kansas! Tyler Padman and Chris Harris coming from the secondary. Carl Torbush, defensive coordinator for Kansas. The last six quarters coming into this football game, he felt like his defense was coming along. They created some turnovers, and watch this. Out of the shotgun, run the ball. They load it up with two lead blockers. Those two lead blockers can't clear the way. Unbelievable effort by Kansas. I mean, that's gang tackling right there. Patman and Harris take a bow. Patman was big in that Colorado game, Steve, recovering a fumble for a touchdown and, and having an interception. A huge momentum swing for the Jayhawks if they can take advantage. Sims with about five yards across the 35. Justin Gent on the tackle, the senior from Irving, Texas. Sims going over 600 yards now, rushing on the season in a true freshman season. And they loaded, Oklahoma State loaded that run up. Bryant Ward and David Paulson. They had two lead blockers in front of Kendall Hunter and they got no movement at the line of scrimmage. Sims in the Wildcat running right. Cuts up field down at the 30 yard line. We'll still need three more yards for a first down as we take a look at the first half possessions for the Jayhawks. One or two punts two punts in the football game. But Kansas they went on multiple play drives as well. 13 plays 73 yards they get stopped at the one yard line. Pivotal pivotal deal in the football game right there. Not finishing that if they could have gone 14 plays for 74 yards, they'd have a lead right now. Oklahoma State rushes four. Meekum throws right, and it looked like it was tipped at the line of scrimmage. It will be fourth down and three. 
And uh, Keys, it's, it's been clean in the turnover department. Kansas fumbled inside the five yard line, but recovered it. Two touchdowns. They had to, they had to settle for a field goal. Uh, no, they didn't. They didn't uh, settle for any field goals. Limit the yak. 68 yards after contact with Oklahoma State. That's not too shabby. It's not too shabby at all. First field goal opportunity of the day right here. Jayhawks. From 47 yards out, Brandstetter's career long has been 57 against Oklahoma. That's the fourth longest in Jayhawk history. Yeah, and it is blocked. It rolls to the 20 yard line and dies there. Blocked by Chris Donaldson. How about Bill Young's defense? They have to defend a short field because the offense doesn't convert on fourth down. They stuff Kansas and then block the field goal. Defense and special teams stepped up when the offense stubbed their toe. Jayhawks do not want to look back at this game at missed opportunities. And here, one. Oh, look at this penetration. Get in the crease, get your hands up, up and over the top, and it's the down line, and they get, that's a low kick. That's a low trajectory. That shouldn't have been blocked. I mean, the blocking wasn't great, but it was good enough. You have to get the ball airborne a lot faster. Branstetter tried to drive it instead of get it up. They'll have the football at the 30 from where they were on the offensive drive. Bring it back to the uh, line of scrimmage when Kansas had the football. Leading looking downfield. Now rolls to his right side. Good coverage by the secondary. Blackman is incomplete. The first and ten line is brought to you by Phillips Televisions. Now the Oklahoma State Cowboys have been road warriors this year. They uh, last won four straight road games in the same season in 1985. If they win today, it will be the first time Oklahoma State went undefeated on the road since 1945, the end of World War II. And if they win today, they're eight and one over the last two years in the road. Downfield they go. First down, Cooper inside the 40-yard line. Mm. You know, you double Blackman and you leave the middle of the field open, and Cooper will hurt you. There's, there's only so much you can do. You can't double team everybody. You can't defend everything. There are weapons everywhere. And Whedon says, I got my man Coop down the middle of the football field, and I'm going to hit him. I mean, wide open. He settles in a nice little seam of the zone defense right there. He has six catches for 85 yards. A little razzle dazzle. Whedon deep, looking for Blackman. Oh. Incomplete. Blackman adjusted to the football quicker than Barfield could, but could not finish the play. But they run a little flea flicker action. The run fake, pitch it back to the quarterback and try to go deep to Blackman. And they've done this before. Randall pitches it back to Whedon. And there he is, Barfield not fooled. And the adjustment to the football, we talked about how Blackman can track a football and adjust in midair. He didn't have to leave his feet that time, could not quite adjust to it. Delay a game. Or timeout. There is a flag down. See if the timeout was 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 granted before the flag. There is no foul for illegal substitution on a defense. This is the first charge timeout for Kansas of the second half. That's why they called the timeout. It would have been penalized five yards. Justin Blackman has gone over 1,500 yards receiving. He has been outstanding today. This ball underthrown, and Blackman almost came up with a marvelous catch. Oklahoma State still by six. Dave Lapham with Jim Knox in Lawrence, Kansas. Jayhawks in this game trailing by six, but Oklahoma State on the move with a second down, 10 situation from the Kansas 40. Brandon Whedon looking downfield. Whips it to Blackman. First down at the 25, and he muscles his way to the 22. Where he's brought down by Isaiah Barfield. Watch the comeback route by Blackman. He's going to drive the defensive back off the, off the line of scrimmage, come back for the football. Look at him drift back four or five yards, present himself as a big, viable target. Man, he runs great routes. They run to the right and straighten up by the defense led by Justin Springer. You know, Kansas saying they have the football. The officials saying he was down. Saying he was down. But Dave, I wanted to ask you about this. Justin Blackton was, was suspended for the Kansas State game. Right. And Dana Hope 
Holgerson really felt that it forced Whedon to take his eyes off 81 and spread the ball around and he said Brandon has been much better since that time. It, it made him I had that football game and it made him a better quarterback. I mean 23 passes of 20 or more yards and that's his fallback guy his go to guy his bailout guy. He didn't have him at Kansas State. He had to visualize the whole field and distribute the ball to everybody. He did it well. Now they set up the screen well. This is Randall trying to cut back. And Randall is inside the 15 yard line. Just Flags go down. If Jonathan Rush can get his block, it might be a touchdown. Jonathan Rush, the big offensive lineman, is out in front and he tries to cut a guy to the ground and misses, doesn't get the block. I wonder if they're going to call him for illegal use of hands. He tried to pull the defender down, I thought, a little bit in desperation. I'm not sure if that's what the flag is. There are two different flags. I don't know if the officials both saw the same thing. After the play, personal foul with unnecessary roughness, late hit. Number 68 of the offense. The penalty will be 15 yards, third down. Fourth personal foul penalty on the Cowboys. Four penalties for 60 yards. Lane Taylor is the guilty party on this one. And in the red zone, you work so hard to buy real estate to get in the red zone, and then you give it back. There's the missed block by Jonathan Rush. If he makes that block, it could have been big. And then late, there's the late hit coming in to peel him off the pile. They call Lane Taylor for the late hit as he's as he's peeling defenders away. Four penalties for 60 yards. Can't have it. Third down, 16. Weeden rolling right. Gets it to Blackman. Eludes one to the 15, to the 10. Blackman first down at the two. Unbelievable. He made Isaiah Barfield miss, and he's down and, and struggling right now in a little bit of pain, but in space, he made Isaiah Barfield miss. There's a penalty flag, it's gonna be negated. I think there's gonna be a hold on Oklahoma State. But watch Barfield here in space, miss, and there he goes off to the races. As he's taken to the turf, he falls awkwardly, and he kind of injures that left uh, leg a little bit as Patman takes him to the turf, but there's a penalty that's gonna nullify all that action. And if he gets injured with a left ankle injury, and, and the play didn't even mean anything because of penalty, that would be salt in the wound. It would be incredibly painful because Oklahoma State next week has Oklahoma in Stillwater. They'll need Blackman to beat the Sooners. Cowboy fans can breathe a little easier as Justin Blackman talking to his trainers. He did walk off under his own power, but this is a painful look at this injury to his ankle. Look at Tyler Patman as he makes contact, slides down the body. Watch him fall over right there, falls over that left ankle, and you get an ankle sprain on that one. And that's what uh, exactly what Blackman suffered. Nothing more than that. He did walk off under his own power. It doesn't seem like there's any kind of fracture or anything. Just rolled that ankle over, and uh, I'm not sure if he'll be back today. He would have had over 100 yards if he did, uh, if that play counted. Shelf is in. Shelf for Blackman. A hold brought it back. Now they run underneath to Josh Cooper, and Cooper with a nice gain to the 29 yard line. Isaiah Barfield in the tackle. Let's uh, show you why Blackman's play was nullified. Got his money's worth. Watch right here. Jonathan Rush. Now he missed the screen block. And a little bit of a stunt. Walt loses his balance, steps on the center's foot, slides, takedown. And it, it's marginal because he did let him go. But Jonathan Rush, he, he stepped on his center's foot, and his foot out, went out from under him, lost his foundation, and down came the building. Dan Bailey from 46, his long this year, has been 52. He leads the Big 12 in scoring, and the kick is on the way, and it is no good. Hooked it. Only his third miss this year. That's his first miss outside of 40 yards. Wow. He was perfect outside of 40. He had his two misses inside of 40. And just into the wind, remember. And that wind's stiff. Throwing into the wind, quarterbacks have been short with their tosses. And that wind pushed the field goal wide left. Mike Gundy knows he's in for a fight. Again, we told you they had travel trouble yesterday. On Friday, arrived at 10:15, throwing off their routine. They lead by only six. Meekum looking for an opening, throws it away. Second down and ten. They're going to ask their defense maybe to lift their offense. And their defense stood up on a goal line stand when the offense went for it on fourth down and came up short. The defense stood up on a three and out. Blocked the field goal, special team. So Turner Gill is lamenting right now. In his mind, he's thinking, 
we've missed opportunities. We, if we punch it in from the one yard line, we have a lead. If we take advantage of a short field and score any points, we could build on the lead. Have to take advantage of all opportunities. James Sims looking for an opening. Gains about three. Let's go to Jim Knox. Steve, good news. Uh, Justin Blackman up on the sidelines. So they retaped that left ankle. They taped it over the shoe. So it looks like he will be back in action, guys. Actually, that's called the spat. They spatted that bad boy up. He already had a tape job in the left ankle underneath the socket shoe, but now they spat it over that shoe to give him additional support. This conference has great receivers. Ryan Broyles from Oklahoma, Jeff Fuller, Texas A&M, right here with Oklahoma State, Justin Blackman, three of the best receivers in all of college football. No question. Makeham wants to go deep. There's it out. Oh, and it's dropped. They would have had the first down. Omiji, who had a fine first half, was thinking about running before he caught the football. Bingo. Trying to make his first move before squeezing the pig. First thing you have to do is squeeze the pig. Look at his comeback route. He gets separation coming back to the football, and it goes right through his hands to his chest, and you can see him peeking over that right shoulder. He was trying to locate Hedgepeth and decide if I, he was going to spin inside or outside. Don't locate the defensive back till you make sure you have possession. So many missed opportunities for Kansas. Josh Cooper inside his 20. Brought down at the 26. We've got a break in the action. 8.26 left in the third quarter. Cowboys lead by just six. about that some of the scenes we've seen on a beautiful day and a great moment here because Justin Blackman the All-American candidate wide receiver had his ankle retaped he's back on the field Blackman as Dana Holgerson the offensive coordinator for the Cowboys said he's the best receiver I've had since Michael Crabtree at Texas Tech Whedon has his man back in and Brandon throws left wow. and wide open for a first down down the left sideline as they immediately go to Isaiah Anderson who's coming up big as a sophomore another inside receiver to the outside this time and they lose him in coverage they pick up the twist the offensive line sorts the stunt out and they just let him go all by his lonesome on the perimeter. He made them pay dealer five dearly 510 168 pounds. Kendall Hunter sneaking inside gains about 10. Looks like he got the first down needed to get to the 28 of the Jayhawks and he's to the 27. Bradley McDougal making the tackle the receivers today. They've six, been moving it around. Yeah six different guys. You know Blackman and Cooper. How about Cooper. Almost he's closing in on 100 yards as well. Blackman has not had less than 100 yards in every single game he's played this season. He wants to keep that streak alive. Hunter again up the middle. Cuts back into the 20, and he's closing in on 100 yards. How about that? If you come up with two receivers that caught the ball for over 100 yards and a running back that rushed it for over 100 in the same game, that dog will definitely hunt if they can get that done today. 21 carries for Kendall Hunter. 103 yards and that is his 20th 100 yard game only Terry Miller who had 26 and Thurman Thomas who had 21 had more in their career remember Hunter missed much of last year because of injuries yep. play action Whedon whips it to the right Blackman with the catch he's got the first down inside the 10 yard line and that could put him over that 100 yard mark. And how about Blackman? He's got a capital C on his chest. Competitor is what that's all about. Another comeback route. Come back to the ball. You hear basketball coaches all the time. Don't wait for the basketball. Come back to the ball. Same in football. Don't wait for the ball. Come back for the ball. These comeback routes are run to perfection by these Oklahoma State receivers. How quickly the Cowboys moved down the field, put themselves in scoring position. Hunter to the right. Hunter back to left. To the five-yard line. Drew Dudley on the tackle. 
You know, it, it's like I don't have enough fingers to block the holes in the dike. You know, I mean, I go after Blackman, Hunter hurts me. I get those who got Cooper hurts me. You know, it's like you can't you can't defend everybody. You have to defend. This offense is prolific. Hunter up the middle. And it's Jeremy Smith, I beg your pardon, who scores the touchdown. The redshirt freshman from Tulsa, Oklahoma, scores, and OSU goes in front by 12. Uh, how about Kendall Hunter leaves as a senior? We've seen Joseph Randall, a true freshman. Jeremy Smith, the redshirt freshman. You think they'll be able to run the football next year? Oh, yeah. Take a look at this. Lower the pads, run behind the pads, and finish it. And remember, every one of these offensive linemen return. All these big boys are back. Oklahoma State rolling. Point after touchdown by Bailey is good. Oklahoma State improves their lead to 13. Cowboys believe in the right there for their 10th win. And they have only done that a few times in the history of the school. As a matter of fact, the first time they did it was 84. Then they did it in 87 and again in 88. Our BCS rankings have Oklahoma State at number 10. There's some good games today. I mean, Boise State won last night 51 nothing over Fresno State. I have a feeling they're going to leapfrog TCU. Will these two be playing in the in the Big 12 championship game? Nebraska and Oklahoma State. Maybe. We'll see. They're number eight, number 10 in Oklahoma. That's Oklahoma State's opponent next week. Bedlam. Missouri, Kansas and Missouri playing the border war and, and they play tonight against Iowa State and of course uh, Texas A&M they have a titanic struggle themselves and, and they finish with Texas in that big rivalry so I mean they, they got a lot of big 12 football action left and Oklahoma State has won 10 games before never regular season though if they win today they're 10 and 1 in the regular season for the first time in school history they won 10 games but it was bowl game victories that got them to 10. Not regular season action. Cowboys are happy as Oklahoma State has improved the lead over Kansas 27 14. Quinn Sharp. It will be taken by the Jayhawks. And they will have the football at their own 20 yard line. Tyler Hunt brought it back. Now let's take a look at our lot impact player of the week presented by Acura. It's Sam Acho of the Texas Longhorns having a terrific year despite the Longhorns down season. Right. But four more total tackles against Oklahoma State, including four quarterback pressures. And you know, this kid has got time management figured out. Outstanding student, outstanding citizen. Everything he does, he he, he takes some teammates to Nigeria to distribute medicine with his family. I mean, he, just a top shelf guy. Meekum trying to scramble and goes down at the seven yard line. It almost seems like fatigue is catching up to the Jayhawks. I, I think when you don't take advantage of opportunities, when they slip by and you go, oh man, against a team this good, we should have done more than that. And that starts to subconsciously build up on you. And, and now Oklahoma State is starting to generate momentum. You know, they've got they've got that by the throat a little bit, that big word momentum in Kansas State's starting to struggle. I mean, University of Kansas. How about this little delay and up the middle goes James Sims fighting his way to the 17 yard line. We've got an injured Jayhawk rolling around on the turf out there and that's Sal Capra who's a warrior. Sal Capra's battled a lot of injuries his whole career at Kansas. He got he got rolled up on a little bit. Sal Capra's a tough guy. He's played center. He's played guard. One of the captains of the football team and let's watch him number 59 in the pile. It always happens in the pile and there it is. You get rolled up oh, on man. And, and, and man you, you don't see that coming and Sean Lewis falls in that right ankle and when you have that foot planted you have all your weight on that planted foot you can get rolled pretty good. Well he was the guy that won the Gail Sayers most courageous award last season playing with all of the injuries fighting through them. And despite the Jayhawks struggles last year and this year Capra always seems to. He's there find he, the field he answers the bell you're right he's a, he's a battler. I mean I, I consider the term Mahler a positive for an offensive lineman. 
you get you get at the line of scrimmage, you try to maul people. I mean, that's your job. You're, you're trying to move them in a direction they don't want to go. They want to go in the opposite direction. You're trying to move them. So you do have to maul them a little bit. And Sal Capra is a mauler extraordinaire. Capra is out. Third down and 12. Dwayne Zlatnik moves in at left guard for Sal. Big time in this game for the Jayhawks if they're to have a chance at coming back against the Cowboys. Makeup throws incomplete. He was under immense pressure, Steve. I mean, Meekum never saw the conclusion of the play. He got knocked to the turf. He had to get rid of the football before he wanted to. And Ricketti got there. Boy, just bull rush. He gets to the quarterback. He got he got the big offensive tackle, Riley Spencer, the replacement. They kind of had to slide guys around. Riley Spencer ends up at right tackle and in too high a pad level. And Ricketti just took advantage of that and mashed the quarterback. Meekham with four straight incompletions. He's been so accurate. Rojas punt. Yeah, Did they, yeah there's a flag because Kansas hit Josh Cooper, who was just near the football, and Greg Brown, the guilty man. Interfered with his opportunity to make a catch on the on the punt. Interference with the opportunity to catch the kick. Number five of the kicking team. 15 yard penalty would be added to where the kick ended. First down. And this is uh, one of the, I can't remember a 15 yard penalty on Kansas in this football game, but here's the Correction first one. Correction penalty will be enforced from the spot of the foul. Greg first Brown. Down. Greg Brown does not give Cooper an opportunity to field the punt, which he is allowed to have. Will you give Oklahoma State a short field? You're asking for trouble. This is a team that averages 45 points per game. Cooper's having a marvelous contest with seven catches and six yards shy of a 100 yard game. Meantime, his wide receiver mate, Justin Blackman, on that last drive went over the 100 yard mark for the 10th straight game. Screen. Down that right sideline is Kendall Hunter near the 30 yard line. He's got the first down. Steven Johnson pushed him out of bounds. And, and people are saying, wait a minute, that's their 11th game. Well, remember, he didn't play in the game against Kansas State. That's the game that he was suspended for. And you have to figure that Blackman probably would have had a good chance to getting 100 yards against Kansas State. And he would have had 100 yards in 11 games, but he only, only played in 10 this season. They run Hunter to the left. Kansas Jayhawk defense is all over the play. Now we likely will go back to the air and Brandon has been marvelous this year. This game with 320 yards passing only nine incompletions. Now Oklahoma State. Is on the verge of. Their first all conference quarterback since 1932 and Whedon could be that man and there are a lot of good ones this year. Landry Jones. Blaine Gabbert, Brandon Whedon looking right, throwing oh. right, almost intercepted. That was Tyler Patman. Try, tried to force it into Annium, and there was no go on that. Let's go to Jim Knox. All right, Steve, looks like Sal Capra is through for the afternoon. The right ankle, as you see, uh, no shoes or socks on there. Right ankle injury. He's going to the dressing room right now, guys. He's done. Boy, Knox, it would be a shame if he misses the big robbery border war game next week in Arrowhead. We've got that football game. I know Sal Capra would like to play in that game if he's only got one leg. We'll see. On third down, Cowboys need 12. Blackman to the right. They run the screen again to Blackman and Kansas smelled that out. They had four blue jerseys in that area and Barfield pulled them down. Well that was a nice exchange between Blackman and Barfield. Blackman again watch him come back to the football see him drift back. He does it so well. The big stiff arm Barfield says no. I'm not going to let you stiff arm me like that. I'm going to take you to the turf big man. Fourth down. This would be a long field goal attempt for Dan Bailey. He missed one from about 46, only his third miss this year. 
And they're quickly to that line of scrimmage. Right now, it will be a 50 yard field goal attempt. His longest season has come from 52, and we've got a, a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see a, a, a yellow flag on the field. It this looked like somebody called the timeout. Time Oklahoma State of the second half. Oklahoma State called the timeout. Let's go to Jim Knox. Well, Steve and Dave, you look at ba Dan Bailey's shoes. They really stand out. Nice gold color. I was talking to him before the game, and he's been kicking with those shoes ever since he was a freshman. Now, last week against Texas, the bottom of his left plant shoe, the cleat, actually broke off. What did he do this week? He just glued it back on. He said, I'm going to finish out with my shoes the rest of my career at Oklahoma State. So far, the shoes, it may be all about the shoes, big guys. <laughs> hey, hey, Noxie, I, you got to throw some odor eaters his Way. I mean, he's been kicking those bad boys for four years. I mean, you, get, you don't wash your shit. I'm wondering how, how bad are they, Noxie? Oh, they're, they're you got a whiff? bad. You got a whiff? They're pretty bad. Dave, they, they would be like you wearing them for a solid 10 years without even washing them or doing anything. And they, they look really worn out. And the bottom, they're just hanging on by glue. <laughs> those are dancing with the star shoes right there. The gold slippers, man. There's no place like home. <laughs> Well, here we are in Kansas where the Wizard of Oz was pulled. <laughs> really popular from 50 yards out. Bailey with the gold shoes puts it up and hooks it to the left. This young man came in with only two misses this entire season. And Dan Bailey today has missed twice. Once from 46 and once from 50. Both hooks left. And his two misses prior to that were inside 40. He was 12 for 14, but he was perfect outside of 40, and he's missed two outside of 40 today. But again, both misses into that win. I'm telling you, kicking into that 15 mile an hour wind does not make it easy from that distance. Makeham stays in at quarterback. They run James Sims, not much pushed back, maybe a yard or two. Kansas down by 13 with inside of 18 minutes to try and come back and shock the Cowboys. And remember, Capra is out of the football game, their most veteran lineman, and they've had to make some substitutions. Meekham keeps it himself, and down he goes at the 32-yard line. Jamie Blatnick was not surprised. Everybody else was going left, but Jamie stayed home. Naked bootleg, Jamie Blatnick said, nah. I'm not going to be fooled by that run fake. I see you. I know you got the football, and I'm taking you to the turf. Third down, 11. Jayhawks had great offensive success in the first quarter. Slowed since by a good, solid Oklahoma State defense. Riley Spencer, red shirt freshman, going to get the pads down. Trouble. Meekham does throw an incomplete pass. Angus Quigley was out. There were so many white jerseys in the area. Very doubtful if he would have gotten the first down. But now the pressure coming from the inside and Bassett forced him to th underthrow his man. Bassett, uh, the pressure, uh, all they're doing is pinning their ears back now. They know Kansas has to throw it down two scores, two minutes to go in the third quarter. They're taking that first step up the football field to get after the quarterback every snap. Oh, they blocked the punt! And Oklahoma State will score the touchdown. Michael Harrison with the score. I think he blocked it and picked it up and scored. I think he gets the double gold star. I mean, you block it, you pick it up, you score a touchdown. That's the trifecta. I mean, you can't have anything better happen to you in the form of special teams. Now, remember, Oklahoma State blocked the field goal. Now they block a punt, and they get an unscripted score out of their special teams. Man, that's unbelievable play by Harrison. Block it, pick it up. Well, man, and score. Bailey trying to give them a 20-point lead. Up and through, and the Cowboys beginning to pull away as Michael Harrison blocks the punt, picks it up, goes in for the score, and the kid, the true freshman from Atlanta, Texas, with his fourth touchdown of the season. And, and here he comes. He's going to come. Nobody touches him. A missed assignment. He has a great aiming point. Blocks it. A fortuitous bounce. And he takes it into the end zone. Unbelievable play for Harrison. I mean, 
And and uh, you you look at that's the third punt of the season that Kansas has had blocked. Third of the year. And this one very, very devastating because two score game becomes three score game at the end of the third quarter because of a special teams gap. And they also had the field goal blocked as well. So special teams, the kicking game definitely has favored the Cowboys today. Mike Gundy has coached a complete team this year. That was their sixth non offensive touchdown of the season. They're getting it from the offense. A good enough defense and a special teams that has returned a couple of a kickoff, a punt for a touchdown. They block a field goal now for a touchdown. I tell you, it, when, when you're not a starter on a team this good, that means you're still a good football player and you want to make your contributions in the special teams area. There's three phases to every football team offense, defense, and special teams. And that's uh, Blackman's return to a block punt for a touchdown, and now Harrison has as well. Win shot to DJ Bashirs from the six. DJ is one of their fastest players, but they open up no holes for him. Oklahoma State, we told you the record setters, the playmakers they have in Whedon, Hunter, and Blackman. And uh, again, solid games. You've got two two guys who've gone over 3,500 and Blackman over 1,500. Kendall Hunter at 1,463. You have to go back 19 years to find a trio that went 3,500, 1,500, and 1,500. That was the University of Pacific with quarterback Troy Kopp, running back Ryan Benjamin, and wide receiver Aaron Turner, and they're no longer playing football at UOP. Right, they stopped that, they, they canceled that, uh, stopped that program over there, and the Cowboys tripled. Aikman, Emmett Smith, and Michael Irvin. Triplets here with these Cowboys. Sears brought down on a short or a loss of about a yard. Tackle by Ori Lemon. In Pacific University, Pete Carroll, Bruce Costley, a couple of NFL head coaches matriculated at Pacific University. Troy Kopp, Ryan Benjamin, Aaron Turner. Pretty prolific numbers there. And uh, Oklahoma State is going to blow those away this season. Well, they've had a couple of drops in Nomichi with a couple of drops one on a key first down which led the way to an Oklahoma State touchdown and now he drops one over the middle and this is a guy who's a marvelous athlete and they love Omiji's future but he's got to catch the football. Everything can be contagious making big plays and making mistakes and Omiji right now you have to compartmentalize you can't let one one drop turn into two. And that's what's happened to him. Flags go down before the Illegal snap. Illegal substitution. 12 men on the field in formation against the offense. Five-yard penalty remains third down. I think that's what you need against Oklahoma to beat Oklahoma State <laughs> is 12 men on the field. Really? You definitely need it defensively to stop that potent offense. That's for sure. And Turner Gill knows they're not in Canada, so you can't have that 12th guy <laughs> out there. At one time. Kansas led 14 to 10. Oklahoma State wearing them down. Chuck Long wanted to spread the ball all over, and he's done that. But Oklahoma State's defense has rallied in the second half, and Kansas with only eight yards total offense in this quarter, and almost an Ori interception Lemon. by Ori Lemon, the middle linebacker. Well, did he get a great drop on that? And Ori Lemon, you know, you talk about him. He's an unassisted tackle guy. And watch the big fella drop into coverage. Get yourself back there, big man. Oh, almost picked that bad boy off. Pretty good effort by Ori Lemon in space. Alonzo Rojas will be standing at his goal line for the punt. Kicking to Josh Cooper, who stands near midfield. Got to find Harrison. Wow. They come well again. And end over end kick that really goes well Cooper's able to pick it up and Josh is spun down at the 39 yard line Justin Carnes in the tackle take a look at uh, what we're talking about the power pokes the prolific power pokes Kendall Hunter he can run it he's got vision he's got power he's got speed he's got quickness he's got it all and man I'll tell you look at him look at him just move the pile and then you go to Blackman and Justin Blackman turns a short crossing route into a big yards after catch yards after contact and then might as well get it into another guy and compliment the, the triplets with a quadruplet Cooper's become a quad today. He's a quadruplet. 
From the 39, Whedon looks downfield, going for the home run. Blackman is out there, comes back for the football. Incomplete flag goes down. Yep. Calvin Rubles. Blackman immediately started signaling for the interference call. The field judge didn't call it, the back judge did. And watch Blackman track the football. We talked about his ability to track it and adjust. And, and you know, Charlie Moore, or excuse me, uh, uh, Calvin Rubles made contact prior to the Test arrival of football. Number 17 is defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. You can face guard in college football, You can, but you can't contact the, the, uh, the receiver before the arrival of the football. And that's a 15 yard penalty against Turner Gill's defense. And that's about Blackman and his cardiovascular. You know, even nicked up a little bit. He's the Energizer Bunny. He runs all day. Dave, it's really interesting because this team was picked to finish at the bottom of the South, but I think those guys making the predictions did not know how good Whedon or Blackman, and they have been a huge difference this year in getting them to first place in the South. They knew Kendall Hunter could run. They knew Jeremy Smith would be a power back, and Smith goes to the right side. And now an injury to a Jayhawk that is Olighton Ogentodu. Ogentodu definitely struggling. That right shoulder looks like he's hanging that right arm. That right shoulder is a problem. Lower your shoulder pads and, and finish the run. Pretty good effort right there. Again, a red shirt freshman. They've got players in the funnel. And Kendall Hunter moves on. Randall, that young man, are going to get their, their chance. Jeremy Smith. Green. Randall gets the first down inside the 25. There may be a face mask here, giving him additional yardage as Drew Dudley looked like he had a hand near the face. Yep, and he, he was up in the grill. Anytime you're up in that headgear area, you run the risk. Remember, he's only, you know, he's 5'8. Face mask, number 49 of the defense. The penalty will be half the distance to the goal. First down. If Jonathan Rush can get the defender to the ground, it, it, it might be another touchdown. But to look at Jonathan Rush, can't quite finish the block, and there's grabbing the grill. When you grab the grill, like Drew Dudley did, it's going to cost you some yards. And uh, Randall got underneath his pads. Low man wins in football. Oklahoma State will have the football inside the 12 yard line. Blackman goes wide right. And that's an area, Steve, where a lot of teams have picked on the Kansas linebackers. Get the linebackers in space, not enough uh, speed. Randall, this time Dudley does avoid the block, come in, make the tackle. That's the end of the third quarter. Kansas really pushed back and stifled by a determined Oklahoma State defense trying to get their Cowboys to 10 wins. They block the field goal. They take it in. You're watching Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Phillips Televisions. Time for our direct TV game summary. And Bill Young has to be pleased with his defense in that third quarter. No, there's no doubt in Oklahoma State's uh, special teams. You block two kicks in the game and you take the block punt for a touchdown. Man. That dog will definitely hunt for you. And look at Blackman and Hunter. You know, one runs for 100 yards and one catches passes for 100 yards. And Cooper's got 94. And how about that third quarter number? Oklahoma State, 180 yards. Kansas, a mere 16. I'd say Oklahoma State took full control of the football game after the half. I've been so impressed watching the Cowboys this year. I mean, Mike Gundy has really built a juggernaut. 27 wins the last three seasons. That's the most in school history in a three year span. And they'll be going bowling again, and they'd like to have a BCS bowl, and they could do that with continued success. If they beat the Jayhawks today, they'll be 10 and 1 hosting Oklahoma next week. Whedon looking, throwing left, incomplete, wanted Brian Ward. It'll be third down. Well, there's a couple of things, uh, records that have been sent under Mike Gundy's tutelage here. First season, he won four games. But the next five years, including this year, first time ever they've won seven games or more. First time ever they've won nine games or more, three straight seasons. Five straight seasons, seven or more. And they're going to win more than nine this year. 
I'll tell you, in their last 37 games, they're 28-9 in their 16-5 in the last 21 Big 12. Ooh. Looping it end zone, Blackman touchdown. Number 17 this year. Wow. <laughs> and he missed a game. <laughs> he is he's incredible. That's all I can say. Incredible. Beautiful throw, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is the old fade. And you run the fade from outside the 10-yard line and take it right to the back corner of the end zone. And he, a tight window. Coverage certainly wasn't great. Anthony Davis not tight enough. But uh, Whedon just dropped it in there, like dropping it out of a dive bomber. Bailey for the point after touchdown. Whedon having another strong game. Same with Blackman. Ten straight games. That young man has scored a touchdown coming from the wide receiver position. Eight for 117. Pretty ball right here. Look at that spiral. Came out of his hand. He can spin it. Brandon Whedon knows that he has a home run hitter and his wide receiver Justin Blackman. He is definitely a big play waiting to happen whether it's a shallow cross and yards after reception. I mean you get the ball in space he's a running back make people miss yards after first contact. He is just a guy that can do it all come back route get, get back to the quarterback present yourself as a good target and then just go over the top and throw it in the back corner of the end zone and. Let him track it and catch it. He's got tremendous eye hand coordination. There's no question about it. Blackman over 100 yards receiving. Hunter over 100 yards rushing. Wheaton over 300 yards passing. It has been a marvelous effort. And now they've got a 41 14 lead. Let's go to our Toyota playbook. Well, this unscripted score off a block punt is, uh, is something that uh, is a huge factor in this football game. They release Justin Carnes, the deep snapper. There's Harrison. Watch the up back. The up back basically blocks inside. Nobody touches Harrison. That's unsound, obviously. Harrison picks it right off the punter's foot. Fortuitous bounce. Touchdown. I tell you, that's coffin nails in a game like this when you get an unscripted score out of your special teams. Kansas will change their quarterback and go with Jordan Webb. The redshirt freshman from Union Missouri got a start earlier this year and in his first college start it was against Georgia Tech and he was fantastic throwing for 179 yards and three touchdowns and leading them to an upset over the number 15 Yellow Jackets. Yeah, now you've got an injury to Chris Donaldson. Yeah he's down on his back and he went down quickly. He's flexing that right leg. Moving his left leg and his right leg. I don't know it's it, they're checking out the right leg. Looks like ankle area region. You know, a lot of times you get caught up in piles, and that's what happens in, in, in the game when you're in the interior. And he got hurt up the field prior to that. He got hurt up close to the original line of scrimmage. He went down pretty quickly. Looks like he's going to be able to get up and get off, though. Yeah, they do have a capable backup in Cooper Bassett who's played a lot today a sophomore from Tuttle Oklahoma but Chris is a senior who's had a fine season he's also all academic and secondary education love to see that as Mike Gundy proud of his team both athletically and academically they've got a lot of all academic players including their quarterback mm -hmm. Whedon made academic all big 12. They do have some defensive linemen. They roll people in up front, but the linebackers and secondary play a lot of snaps. Kansas has started three quarterbacks this year. Gail Pick, Quinn Meekum, and Jordan Webb. And Webb has the strongest arm of the three. He will also be throwing into the wind. Gets it to Bashirs. To Bashirs down the right sideline for the first down. In fact, Chuck Long told me earlier in the season when we had a prior Kansas game that Jordan Webb has the strongest arm he's ever coached. Wow. And when you think about him having coached at Oklahoma and other places, that's quite a statement. But Webb does have a powerful throwing arm. Only six feet tall and 210 pounds, all state in Missouri. He will now run. And he has that left shoulder injury. They hit him on the left side here. And it was Sean Lewis, the true freshman from Missouri City, Texas, with the hit. And uh, he's a better athlete than you think. He can run faster than you think. I mean, Jordan Webb, he ran a spread offense in high school. 
He's very comfortable and familiar with running a spread offense. And basically, they want to continue to evaluate this young man. He had the injury to the non-throwing shoulder, but healthy, and they want to continue to evaluate his progress. He swings it left. That's Damon Patterson. Patterson up close to a first down. The mark will be important. Well, Webb and Sims have been excellent foundation for their future. And uh, I mean the passing and rushing this season team leaders as a freshman. Webb and Sims have done it. We've got to go to Louisiana Monroe and Wake Forest also doing it. Only the third time. This would be the third time it's ever happened in Jayhawk history. Right. right. It's a rare quarterback running back combination. Third down inches to go. Running inside is James Sims for the first down. You know, when you look at it, you wonder, is this the foundation for the future? Obviously, James Sims is something to work with. This kid's been a huge factor in every single win that the Jayhawks have accomplished this season. And they're determining if Webb's going to be the guy or not. From the 45-yard line, Deshaun Sands now in the game for James Sims. They go from underneath the center to the shotgun, changing the play. They give it to Deshaun Sands, and he slides forward for about a two-yard game. But there's an entire change with offensively, defensively, when you bring in a new coaching staff. Last season, the Jayhawk offense spread the field. They were heavy on the pass and ran out of the shotgun. This year, the team is huddling up. They're more balanced. And the quarterback has been under the center, but as the season progressed, they've got more shotgun and with the no huddle. They have. They've gone up tempo, and they had great success with it against Georgia Tech in their upset victory early in the season here. Webb throws first down at the 34-yard line. Jonathan Wilson with the catch. You know there there are some pieces. You're going to have to continue to build on those pieces. You want to increase speed at every position. And where you go to get speed, you go to Texas and Florida. And that's where Turner Gill is going to go get his speed. This football team will definitely play hard. We've seen that. They need more depth at defensive line and linebacker. They're very deep at the receiver position so far, although we had a brain cramp right there by DJ Bashir's starting right before the snap. the snap. False start. Offense, number 20. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Dave, it's interesting. Before Turner Gill took the Buffalo job, he studied the conference, and he noticed that, you know what, all you need in this league is a really good quarterback, a running back, and a wide receiver. He did that, and in his last year at Buffalo, I mean, they set the school record with 424 points two years ago, so it was the second to final year. But he's, he noticed the same thing as with Oklahoma State. Sure. Everybody picked him fifth, sure. but they've got a quarterback, a running back, and a wide receiver, and he wants that foundation, is hoping, Webb might be that guy. Webb downfield, beautiful throw, but what a great recovery and break up by Andrew McGee. For a Phillips Television's game break, let's now go to Darren Horton. Steve in Ann Arbor, number seven, Wisconsin, is starting to get a whiff of the roses. Monty Ball with a huge day. Four rushing touchdowns, 194 yards. Badgers with a 20-point win at the big house. Steve? Wow. Badgers getting it done. Want to go to the Rose Bowl. Back to live action, and we have Kansas University knocking on the door. University of Kansas. Looked like Brad Thorson got hurt. The right tackle. He's another senior. He ended up taking his running back down. He tried to get out there on the slip screen, and he collided with his back and took the front of the hit. Basically, he gets an unassisted tackle, which he doesn't want to have. Take a look at him out there in space. Watch number 76. Right there, boom, he takes his takes his guy down. He takes his receiver down on the slip screen. Unintentionally, obviously, he took a Michi to the turf and he took a, took a pretty good shot. Third and 15. Webb eludes the rush, looks downfield, and then throws the pass <laughs> incomplete. And he needed to go beyond that mark. And as he grows as a quarterback, do you think he'll know where the sticks are to go for that first down? Yeah, I, I think so. And it, at that, at this point, he's out of pocket, and he's uh, he's Ben Gazzara running for his life. <laughs> and he just he wants to make sure that he doesn't end up with the football in his hand. Actually, I think he was trying to get the ball down the field to Patterson. But as at Patterson and 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 the receiver that deflected to Jonathan Wilson, 
crisscrossed at different depths right at the same time. Rojas pushes it. Taken by Bo Bowling. Oklahoma State has a long way to go, but they are just moments away from their 10th win of the year. On a gorgeous November afternoon in Lawrence, Kansas, that's a look at the Campanile Tower on the University of Kansas. And our Big 12 news and notes. The Big 12 has seven bowl eligible teams. Iowa State trying to be the eighth hosting Missouri tonight. Tech could get a six beating Weber State. Texas has four wins with Florida and Atlantic and Texas A&M in front of them. And it's been a great year for the Big 12. Five of the 12 teams, almost 50%. BCS ranked. Kansas State getting votes. Baylor still getting votes. It's been a good year. Yeah, Kansas State, they're at Colorado today. It's going to be an interesting game there because the Buffaloes have played well at home and stunned Iowa State last week. They run the screen. Blackman with the catch. And he is out of bounds. He is limping now. It shows you the toughness of, of Justin Blackman, the injury that he suffered to his ankle and still played. And Kansas State with a 14-9 lead over Colorado and Cody Hawkins, who's having his senior day. Weber State, Texas Tech at 3 Eastern. And the Longhorns going for win number five. Then you've got Iowa State. That's going to be interesting. The Iowa State game in Ames hosting Gabbert and the Tigers. Without Austin Arnott at the quarterback position, he blew his knee out. Means Jerome Taylor likely will get the call at quarterback. And he had some good moments in a touchdown drive last week against the Buffaloes. And the year before, had the game out in Nebraska when he engineered that upset. Arsene Arnott didn't play. Of course, the big story in that game, Iowa State was plus eight. Nebraska minus eight in the turnover <laughs> department. It's tough to beat the Little Sisters of four when you go minus eight. Third down and inches. For Oklahoma State, Jeremy Smith, who's their power back in the game. Smith gets the first down. Ooh. Almost broke it. You know, he gets downhill now. This kid is your classic downhill running back. Squares those shoulder pads up and gets after it. You know, Randall. The uh, true freshman running back that we've seen in, in the game now, they've run a lot of screens through. They can line him up at any one of the wide receiver positions as well. This young man is a, just a, a very, very intelligent football player. Great football IQ. Clock will stop due to an injured player on the field. Now they will run the clock after the injury brought a player off the field. Joseph Randall is the running back, but instead Whedon will throw and fires right side, caught by Blackman. He catches the ball, takes his helmet off, <laughs> checks out a little bit. I'll tell you, this this guy surprised a lot of people. I, I think people knew that he could play, but play at this high a level, I mean, he is setting the standard. He is the gold standard nationally across the board. Yards, touchdowns, yards per game. He's big time. He backed up Des Bryant last year and only had 20 catches. Now they make the throw to Michael Harrison, who blocked that punt and went in for the touchdown. And Harrison, a wide receiver with a great future, a true freshman. Blackman, though, with 10 catches for 130 yards. Whedon is now 27 for 38, 359 yards, and two touchdowns. So the big play guys have not disappointed. No, I mean, game after game. And, and, and coming into the into the football game, Blackman was averaging 17 yards a catch. He's below that today. Four yards below his uh This is a average. second charge timeout to Oklahoma State. We've got a timeout of the field. 8.25 to play. Oklahoma State looking for win number 10 of the year. Oklahoma State with a 41 14 lead over Kansas. FoxSportsSouthwest.com is your home for Big 12 football. Check out highlights from every Big 12 game, post game analysis, and the Big 12 showcase. FoxSportsSouthwest.com, the place for Big 12 football. 
And we have seen some tremendous quarterbacks this year in the Big 12 Landry Jones and Robert Griffin and Blaine Gabbard and Taylor Martinez. But Brandon Whedon has just set the Oklahoma State total offense record. He has 3,684 yards total offense, eclipsing Zach Robinson's record from 2007. The first and ten line is brought to you by Phillips Televisions. Dave, I bring that up simply because will Whedon be named all conference? You know that Oklahoma State has not had an all conference quarterback since 1932. Here is Whedon going downfield, completes the pass. And he gets it to Colton Shelf, and they've got the first down inside the 30-yard line. Little naked bootleg, get Whedon out of pocket, change the launch point. And his wide receiver comes in, in, in motion, runs a shallow cross. Not so shallow, just a little crossing pattern. And, and that's Shelf, and Whedon puts it right on the shelf. Easy play for Shelf. First down for the Cowboys. The last all-conference quarterback for Oklahoma State was a guy named Clarence Highfield who led the school then known as the Oklahoma A&M Aggies to a 9 1 and 2 record under the legendary coach Poppy Waldorf. Now Whedon doing it for Mike Gundy and there's the screen and this is Bryant Ward wrapped up and finally hog tied back at the 24 yard line. Let's go down in the field to Jim Knox. All right Steve had a chance to talk to Brandon Whedon before the game. He said believe it or not last season watching Zach Robinson on the sidelines really helped his game. He said talk continues to talk to Zach Robinson at least once a once a week right now Zach Robinson plays with the Detroit Lions. Face mask. Number 45 of the defense. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Justin Springer called for getting the hand up in the grill, and that's going to cost the Jayhawks. Let's go back to Jim Knox. What he was saying was he talks to Zach Robinson at least once a week. Right now, Zach was picked up by the Detroit Lions. They remain close, but he did say last year really helped a lot just observing from the sidelines. It shows this year, definitely. Remember, he started the second half against Colorado last year and rallied Oklahoma State to victory with 168 yards and a 45-yard touchdown that won the game to Justin Blackman. This is Ward right side. Not much. Who do you go all conference in the Big 12? I, I think you have to go with Whedon. I mean, you know, people thought that Oklahoma was going to be good. People knew about Landry Jones. People knew about Robert Griffin. Brandon Whedon is one of college football's great stories. I mean, no, nobody knew for sure what kind of quarterback this guy was. I mean, he's leading the nation. They have three in the top five of the nation, though, which is phenomenal. But Whedon, his team was picked fifth. In, in the Big 12 South. Now Griffins was picked six and he's having a great year. It's tough. I mean, I, I can make a case for all of them, but Whedon is an unbelievable story. Brandon throws incomplete. A little bit too high for his target. Michael Harrison, the wide receiver from Atlanta, Texas. I mean, his offense is averaging 45 points a game. They got 41 on the board here today. That's not going to hurt their average all that much. And he's he's executing his offense as well as anybody. And, He's got Dana Vogelson uh, calling plays for him, who has an unbelievable system that he's taught to his players quickly, and Coach Gundy is on a roll. He's got a program that's operating at a high level of efficiency. They run Smith off the right side. He already has one touchdown today, and Smith goes out of bounds near the two-yard line. When you talk about offensive juggernauts you've got to talk about Oregon Nevada but of course the Cowboys are at the top almost 550 yards per game Oregon held down last week right. almost beaten at Cal and, and you know, everybody knows about Oregon everybody knows about Boise State they've gotten a lot of national notoriety people are just starting to find out about the Cowboys it's it's caught on the last I don't know two or three weeks but they've been doing this all season long they have been a model of consistency now fourth and one going for it looping an end zone yes indeed touchdown to Tracy Moore what a throw Are you kidding me an unbelievable throw third touchdown pass in the season now Whedon has got tremendous size in the pocket 6'4 220 pounds touch accuracy that's just just beautiful <laughs> nothing Poetry in motion right there. 
his 30th touchdown pass of the year one shy of the all time record set by Josh Fields with 31 Bailey with the point after touchdown and Oklahoma State looking like the team we expected we had a fight in the first half but it's all Cowboys second half. Steve Fiziak, Dave Lapham, Jim Knox with you in Lawrence, Kansas, named after Amos Lawrence, prominent politician and anti-slavery partisan way back. Well, here we go with Oklahoma State coming in and playing well, led by Brandon Wheaton. Hard to take your eyes off this guy. I mean, he makes every throw and he makes them effortlessly. He attacks every quadrant of the football field and his touch, his timing just phenomenal he, the ball comes out of his hand beautifully he can spin it with the best of them 31 of 43 389 yards three touchdowns now 30 for the season and look at Oklahoma State's done in the second half defense really came to play in the second half yeah Oklahoma State just took the uh, this this football game by the throat they have lost only one time and that was to the Nebraska Cornhuskers who needed to score 51 to beat them in a and they did win by 10 right and uh, the Cornhuskers rolled for over 500 yards total offense Dave how do you beat Oklahoma State well you're going to have to play the perfect game you can't turn it over you have to force some takeaways somehow Oklahoma next week in Bedlam Oklahoma's defense has to force uh, Oklahoma State to punt the football and take it away and limit the possession. Oklahoma's going to have to get their running game going and keep Oklahoma State's uh, offense on the sideline. The best way to defend them is like try to do to Peyton Manning with the Colts, keep them on the sideline. Deshaun Sands down that left sideline. Weekdays on FSN, it's the Dan Patrick Show. Don't miss exclusive guests, including high profile athletes and celebrities, breaking sports news and unparalleled insider access and pop culture commentary. The Dan Patrick Show, weekdays at 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. Pacific on FSN. And Kansas gets called for holding. They're backed up, so their field position worsens. Very, very tough uh, second half for the Jayhawks. Uh, they really went after it in the first half. But they missed some opportunities, Steve. You know, they didn't score on the doorstep. And, uh, you know, they, then they had a field goal blocked. They have a punt blocked for a touchdown, and it just started to all unravel. Webb staying in the game. Flips it to the left side. Short game. Back to the original line of scrimmage by Jonathan Wilson. But you just wonder if this young man will be their future as a redshirt freshman. He's thrown for almost 1,200 yards this year. And he said he gained valuable time last year just as a scout team quarterback and watching Todd Reesing, who was outstanding in his four years for the Jayhawks. He needs 102 yards passing before the season ends to set a freshman passing record at Kansas. Might do that next week against Missouri if he sees playing time and right. maybe starts against the Tigers as Meekham has started the last four. Oklahoma State trying to make history in Stillwater. The Cowboys looking for their first Big 12 South championship with a game plus to go. They need to finish off the Jayhawks. Then they've got Oklahoma next week. Oklahoma State has never won the South. Webb incomplete. Too low for James Sims. And one thing that Mike Gundy feels that his team is fresh mentally and physically his whole mojo is don't wear you out beat you up you know he, he believes college football is a grind he wants to lessen the grind on Tuesdays they practice for an hour and 40 minutes that's the only day in pads Wednesdays an hour and a half Thursdays for an hour his Cowboys are fresh particularly the young guys because you can hit a wall if you're a true freshman he's made it easier for him. there's that soccer style kick which bounces Past the 40 yard line and rolls to the 34 and dies there. But the South Oklahoma State has a chance. Now they've got to go home, take on the Oklahoma Sooners and their great offense, led by their trio of Jones, Murray, and Broyles. Texas AM has a big game tonight in College Station 
against the leader of the Big 12 North Nebraska. And then they have Texas. After that they have to sweep those two football games to stay in the hunt depending on what happens with Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. There's Nebraska Mizzou again tonight in Ames against Iowa State. That's going to be a real fight for the Tigers. We'll see Missouri next week at Arrowhead against the Kansas Jayhawks in the border war. Stewart hit and breaks a tackle. Boy, he's got some kind of strength for a kid 5'10, 200. Prince Candy. And, uh, man, he just he ran through like candy from a baby. <laughs> They have a new quarterback in the game that is Clint Shell, Colton's brother. Clint, a redshirt freshman from Enid, Oklahoma. He's more of a combo quarterback, runner slash passer, much like you're seeing in this era of college football. Not as big in the pocket. It's six one. I want to remind our fans we've got the big game coming your way next that Stanford and Heisman Trophy candidate Andrew Luck against Shane Vereen who carried the ball 42 times in the Bears shocking win over the Cardinal last year 42 times for 193 yards and Vereen may have to do the same thing if they're going to beat the number 16 in the nation and Steve the band is on the field the band is on the field. <laughs> Joe Starkey's call still my favorite of all time. Unreal. It was voted the top college play in the history of the game. And that ball is up near the 50 yard line. They've got the first down for Oklahoma State. Looks like uh, shelf with the completion. John Elway was quarterback in that famous football game. Yeah and he had driven them down the field for right. a remarkable victory they thought right and then five laterals <laughs> by four different players later who was it uh, and were Kevin Moan who ran over the trombone player, trombone player. And, and were some of those legal uh, no, I don't know <laughs> <laughs> that's why Stanford still does not even uh, admit that. in <laughs> some of their periodicals that Cal won the football game right. let's go to Jim Knox Okay, see, I tell you what, you can't say enough for this Oklahoma State defense. Uh, now relaxing on the bench, and rightfully so. Bill Young challenged his defense at halftime. you got to be more aggressive, be more poised. They've done just that. Second half, Kansas right now just got three first downs, guys. And Noxie, I thought it was a huge stand when Oklahoma State went for it on fourth down, came up short, short field for Kansas offense. And that group right there, one, two, three, and out, and then blocked the field goal. Kansas gets nothing out of that opportunity, and they took over the football game I thought that was a big big turning point Bill Young was here with the Jayhawks when they had their success then joined Mike Gundy at Oklahoma State and Gundy told us earlier in the week he said we don't have overwhelming talent on defense but we've gotten better every single week and he said that's a credit to Bill Young who's quiet subtle but firm with this football team that's coaching you know when when your players on offense defense and special teams all are better in, in the 11th game than they were in the first game that's coaching for those of you watching on the other stations you will be leaving our game in a moment for your next live event we'll update you with the final score of this game Steve Fiziak Dave Lapham and Jim Knox shelf goes to the right side and completes the pass for a first down. Charlie Moore, a backup wide receiver with his fourth catch of the year. Charlie Moore, most of his contributions have come on special teams. They've got some uh, they've got some depth. Mike Gundy has done a great job recruiting. You know, people thought, oh, they built for the uh, the, the Dez, Matt Robinson, you know, Kennel Hunter year last year. Well, and it didn't work out. Hunter got hurt. Dez got suspended. Mike Gundy has built a program not just for one season, for a long time. He's accepting congratulations as his team trying to run that clock out. And they do stay in bounds to wind it out. And with a win today, this is the first time Oklahoma State has gone unbeaten on the road since 1945. 65 years. And that's from a football team, Dave, that many predicted would finish fifth in the Big 12. South and they may win it all.
and uh, five road wins for the third time in school history but not going undefeated in those five wins and you talk about a guy that has won a lot of football games for this football team their last 22 Big 12 games now they're 17 and 5 in their last 38 games they're 29 and 9 this team is, is built for the long haul 597 yards of total offense that offense has gotten them to first place in the Big 12 South now they have one game to go and it's against Oklahoma let's go to Jim Knox all right thank you Steve coach you got to be extremely pleased the way you guys play in the second half offense finishes with a total of 597 total yards well I was really pleased with the way our team competed in the second half and um, we told them coming up here it wasn't going to be easy and uh, the real key was the defense they gave up 80 yards in the second half and really changed the game and then the block punt was huge at that point the game really wasn't under control and uh, Joe DeForest had a great plan on the block and Michael Harris was able to run it in Brandon Whedon Kendall Hunter Justin Blackman what do they mean to your offense these guys not in leaders are picking up putting up huge points well they've done a great job for us our offensive line has been terrific but uh, but Whedon's played very well and and um, um, 81 and 24 those guys were really done a good job for us and I tell you we, we're getting a lot out of Joe Randall and and Bo Bowling so we're having a really a really good year from a team effort standpoint for the first time in regular season Oklahoma State has won 10 games during the regular season what does that mean to you well I, I'm proud for the Oklahoma State people I'm proud for our team and everybody that's contributed as long as everybody in our program will will jump in with both feet then the sky's the limit for us. I really believe that. And uh, so I'm proud for all the hard work that's gone on for a number of years. Bedlam next week? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we want to enjoy this one for a few hours, but obviously it's a big game. We're looking forward to the competition. There we go. The victory also, you clinch at least a tie of the South Division, the Big 12. Thank you very much. Coach, back to you, Steve. Perfect man for the job. Former great star at Oklahoma State, Mike Gundy. This will be his fifth straight bowl season which is a cowboy record it is a pleasure to watch this football team perform offensively if you're an offensive aficionado you want to tune in when Oklahoma State is performing Whedon Hunter Blackman outstanding on this Saturday afternoon in November our college football Saturday triple header continues right now with Pac-10 action the big game number six Stanford and Andrew Luck against Shane Vereen and California now this is Steve Biziak for Dave Lapham Jim Knox Bob Steinfeld Phil Mollica and our entire crew saying so long from Lawrence where Oklahoma State knocks off KU 48 14 you've been watching Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Phillips Televisions.